look at the moon because the moon and the sun are the same thing. I don't think they're the same thing, no. Like, I think the sun is a, a ball of gas, a star. And the moon is a rock. <laughs> <laughs> What is up to, what is up? <laughs> it's already going to be a day. I had a bucket of fried shrimp before this, and I don't know how I feel. It's my this first time. morning? Yeah. Where'd you get it? Kroger's. It's like the frozen <laughs> shrimp. <laughs> and nothing is sounding good. I'm in my period, my pregnancy stage of like nothing sounds good. That's why I have the Sour Patch. I eat Sour Patch and like that's it. I had, even Moses made bolognese on Saturday and I couldn't even eat a lot of it. Oh my God. I was just, yeah, I don't know. Not, nothing sounds good. I'm going to tell you nothing sounds good. Nothing sounds Did good. Did you have that with Malibu too? Um, mm, a little, I was just more full with Malibu. Oh. Like things tasted good. This one is just like, I, nothing sounds good. This is kind of like pre post pregnancy last time, postpartum. I was like, not, nothing tasted good. And I feel that now. Anyways, I had some fried shrimp. I thought that would taste good. I think it tasted good, but who knows? I had the whole thing. <laughs> I made the whole box thinking like my mom will have some, Moses will have some, but my mom was with Malibu. Moses didn't want any. I was just like, okay, so I ate it all. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where we're at, you guys. And shout out to our patrons. Patreon.com slash just Trish. You guys, we are going full force over on Patreon. We're giving you eight quality videos a week. We're doing our extended podcast right after this, but we're also like going extra days like to film gaming videos. Me and Oscar are going to the movies. Well, we're gonna go get food from the movies this, which I'm so excited about this Friday. Did you bring the Doom buckets? Oh, I should have brought the no. Doom buckets. Well, it's maybe it's better so we don't give it away. Because it's like the big <laughs> the, the big, big reveal. We had the big pool for Patreon. I wanted to feel it because you were telling me like it's crazy. I know. We did get the okay. Doom buckets. I went to the AMC to see Madam Web and then they already Ooh. had the Doom buckets like three weeks early. Walking around the mall with the freaking Doom popcorn buckets. Everyone thought we were perverts, by the way. Everyone oh, was wait, like, really? everyone was looking Looks... sideways. Like, really? Yeah. It, everyone felt some type of way. And what? I don't blame them. The sandworm Doom buckets are like, <laughs> they're a little perverted. Why were you walking around with them? Why didn't you just put them in your car? Because we were shopping. So <laughs> <laughs> we went to like, my boyfriend wanted to go to Aloe. And then I wanted a, like a salad from Stone Oven. And we're carrying wow. around these like gigantic buckets. Are they huge? They're big. And the lid doesn't oh. stay on. So it kept popping up. And then it was like, you know, jerking it <laughs> off to put it back on. It was a mess. It was uh, like. <laughs> it was I ordered like, three of them online for like a hundred bucks. How much oh, were they? They're 25 bucks. Oh gosh. Well, maybe we'll give those away or we'll something. We'll have a giveaway. Because I, I didn't know. Th it's weird too. Because like they say they're not being delivered till like March 1st. I'm like, so do they have the buckets? Do they not have the buckets? Like, are they just selling them in advance? I don't know. I don't know either. I think some AMC employees saw the viralness and were like, let's make a profit. But then AMC, I just put them out early. So. Okay. So yeah. anyways, it'll be up this week on. We'll make make that our Saturday video. Yes. We had a gaming video. We played Five Nights at Freddy's. Shout out. There's the jacket I wore. <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy. We played that. What was the feedback on that? It went good. I mean, <laughs> it was our first time playing were FNAF. Were people mad? Um, no, it was like mixed. Some people were like, maybe they should have played before they recorded. Oof, but I think that's oof. part of the journey. Like, okay. we're playing for the first time. And now, like, whenever we play again, I feel like we're going to be better. Mostly because Callie will be with us next time we that's play. That's <laughs> right. We're going to do a whole gaming day, us three, just Fortnite and all of that. So, yeah. okay. Sorry, guys, for that one. Here I was saying we put out quality. It, people liked it, though. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, I watched it back a few times and I laughed at us okay. all the time. But I always think we're funny. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like this week will be a good one. We've got a mukbang with movie food. Yeah. You can't go wrong what with that. What are you going to get? I love the nachos at AMC. Ooh, me too. Me get too? the double cheese. Oh, yeah. So good. It's kind of like plasticky tasting, but I don't mind me it. Me too. It's like, I don't know. There's something about that AMC. When you're in the, the theater, I don't know. Everything kind of just hits, you know? It totally. Yeah. And popcorn. Anyways, patreon.com slash Jess Trish. <laughs> we do two videos a week. Um, plus, we have a new headshot. This is the headshot of the month, you guys. This is from our Valentine's Day episode, which was also a hit. Thank you, guys. So if you want to get a headshot, they're signed. New headshot Every month, I do not sell them individually on the headshot tier and our producer tier. You get a beautiful headshot, and everyone in the headshot and producer tier also get a Trish Modi sticker. Trish Modi sticker of the month. This is when the hurricane hit. 
And we all remember the Selena Gomez <laughs> rap. And bonuses this month also include for our producer tier. You get a keychain. It hasn't come in yet, but you get a Moses and Trish keychain. What what more could you want, really? <laughs> Plus, you get one of these handwritten cue cards. I've been making them cuter, knowing that they're going to be sent out. So we get a little handwritten cue card. Um, I feel like these will be worth at least a million dollars, like when I'm passed away. Oh. Like, you know, like Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> a handwritten note from Marilyn goes for like 65000 Are you serious? Yeah, so... That's a total investment, you guys. It's an investment. (laughs) I feel like it could totally be a real thing. So anyways, thank you guys for being our patrons. We still have no sponsors, but um, you guys are wonderful, and we are here to give you quality content weekly. And we did crack a code on James Charles' song, but more people didn't pick up on that, that that he took the song from, I mean, heavily inspired. Um, Heavily inspired, yeah. Heavily inspired by Demi Lovato's, what was the song called? Stone Cold. Yes, you guys. No one picked up on it. If you head over to her Patreon, we expect expose the James Charles uh, new song. He covered this Demi Lovato song a lot in like 2019. And I mean a lot. Like he was on his little <laughs> concerts like singing this. He was on Instagram Live singing it. He loves this song. He loves this yeah. song. It sounded exactly like it. I mean, yeah. to my ears. And I didn't even know the Demi Lovato <laughs> song but when he played him. I was like, oh, that's exactly it. Um, we also went through one of my old songs. It's just a fun time. It was literally last week. It was one of my favorite it episodes was a good one. of all time. It we didn't think we had fun. anything. And it became... <laughs> iconic it's timeless so. as well so check it out <laughs> <laughs> patreon.com slash just trish go over and support we love you guys so much and i promise i'll get better at video games <laughs> i'm here for the gaming era um okay so wow yeah i'm excited for our popcorn and nacho day the popcorn the i don't know if it was the doom bucket in particular but my boyfriend did eat the popcorn out of the doom bucket and he did get sick after oh i see you guys didn't say for a movie you guys just got the bucket yeah when we saw madam web it was very much like uh we just went in it was strictly business he, oh you didn't get snacks for that no because mm. he was embarrassed to be seeing madam web um i made him go i need to so, hear about this because this is all over TikTok it's a very too. controversial film um as you know i was really excited for madam yeah. web and i went in wanting to root for that film so bad i knew it was going to be terrible but i'm like you know girl power like dakota johnson sydney sweeney what's not to like right where i felt robbed is sydney sweeney was in her costume for literally maybe like 25 seconds and it was all in the trailer the, the spider-man costume yes and she looked so good in that damn costume and that's <sighs> i am like so easy to please just have cute girls in like the cool superhero costumes flying around and i'm yeah. like this is the greatest movie ever totally yeah but i was robbed of that experience 25 seconds was the other girls in them longer no in the trailer they show all the scenes of them in their costume like it's that short oh my god it was literally why. one of the worst movies i've ever seen <gasps> but i still like had fun at how bad it was what did you rate it on rotten tomatoes you said you were gonna give the rating a oh boost. i'm gonna rate it 100 percent. yeah oh i'm my still God. trying to figure out how to become like an actual critic because i really want to like rig the system a little right. bit um and help all these um movies that are terrible but i'd like <laughs> <laughs> so. oh my god fraudulent you're gonna get your journalist license taken away from you <laughs> you gotta give the honest review when people go there oh i love it i mean it's terrible don't go in expecting a good movie i would love for no, I know you wouldn't. You would I not couldn't. last. I in thought it. about it even for just the experience to go to the movies, and I was like, I can't. You even. wouldn't last. She's giving Rachel Zegler in her interviews, all of them. Dakota Johnson. Yes. Why yeah. is she so miserable? I think all the actresses in it thought they were going to be like in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and this is like the, the knockoff. Yes. Yeah. This is like the knockoff. Um, it's Dakota, like Sony, right? Yes. And Dakota <laughs> Johnson like fired her agent a week after the trailer came out because I think she was just like embarrassed to be a part of it, but. Kudos to her for sticking to the PR. Well, she probably was legally obligated. <laughs> yeah, but true. honestly, she just shouldn't because it just made it just made her unlikable. It makes me not want to watch the movie. It just like there was one little clip of her. I'm sorry. I feel like I don't know what it is. These girls doing press, maybe they just shouldn't because they all just seem so unhappy doing it. And like there was one clip of her saying like, um, "Yeah, the three girls they were tight," and then there was me. It was that like was, very that was my, me. <laughs> that was my uh, edit. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? It was E.T.'s interview where she said that. Oh. And I edited a TikTok but of her. But she actually said that. Or you, yes. you, you edited it to sound like No, she like actually that. said that. Oh, my God. That yeah. was so good. <laughs> and, E.T.'s on um, it. The other girl said that she, the, they have a group text, like a Madam Web group text. And Dakota Johnson is the one that doesn't reply to the group text. I but- love that. <laughs> she, why is she? I mean, why? I can't hate her just because she's so, like, at least she's upfront about being bitchy. You know what I mean? So. Uh. <laughs> Like, no, but right there you can hate someone for that. It's like you can't. I get why know. people. I get why it's a turn off for sure. I'm not gonna go to war. Like if you don't like her, like I get it. But I, I think it's entertaining. So you think she's not? She's not like Rachel Zegler where she's misunderstood. You think she's just? I a think biatch. she's just like that. Yeah, I'm not like. 
I would say, like, in interviews, like, she's very polite to, like, um, everyone who was doing the interviews and stuff. Like, she's not mean. I think she's just, like, a lot of people put on the front to, like, really sell the project. And she's, like, not that girl. She's yeah. kind of just, like, it's not a good movie. I've never watched it. I don't like superhero movies. And but, she's kind of. <laughs> why would you say that? I, just, I don't get that at all. It's just like, if I'm in a superhero movie, you got to sell it, you know? I Yeah, there's two types of people. There's like the Dakota Johnsons. And poor Sydney Sweeney is like selling the hell out of that movie. Like she. She's trying. Give it to her. She's so positive. Like she really is. She's posting the Instagrams of her in her little suit. Like she's really trying to sell it. And Dakota Johnson could not care any less. So. Which is so <laughs> crazy to me. Did you see the one? Because the thing is with the, the reporters too or the interviewers, I feel like she gives nothing. Did you see the one where the guy was like, did you see that viral sentence going around? It was the one where it's like, uh, he was with my mother in when she Amazon. was, yeah, in the Amazon <laughs> yes. when she was researching spiders and died. And then she's like, I mean, it makes sense to me. Like, she's just like, it's a storyline. He's like, no, but it like went viral. Like, what? And she's just giving nothing. And I'm like, oh, this poor interviewer. He's like, okay, yeah, maybe yeah, you're right. Yeah. He just like gave up on it. I'm like, girl, give him something. That's literally what she does. My friend did the interviews for Madam Women. Ours was the one where the earthquake happened mid-interview. Oh. Um, <laughs> she's also apathetic about the, the earthquake. She was just sitting there like, was that an earthquake? <laughs> oh, well, we're in California. Like, and meanwhile, the whole room is shaking. I'm she's like, just like she's... Yeah. that one was wild, too. We were upstairs and it was just like shaking. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, Yeah, it doesn't pass my vibe check, but I guess. <laughs> did people see it? Was it a hit? The movie? Yeah. Oh, no. It, no money. Well, there's people spinning it. Like the girlies on Twitter are like it made like. Um, the budget was like 80 million. I think it made like around 20 million. And the girlies are trying to spin it. They're like, well. 20 million, technically a lot of money. Like if you laid it all out in cash, you know? <laughs> I mean, technically 20 We're trying million. to spin it. We're trying to spin it. There was this story. This could very well be fake news because I tried to like really dive in and research. But there was a story that someone got removed from the theater for masturbating to Sydney Sweeney wow. in wow. her costume. I mean, and... what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it makes sense, oh I guess. No. She is gorgeous. <laughs> She's gorgeous. But I'm like, and granted, I obviously went in because I wanted to see a Sydney Sweeney look like. Yeah, you're giving very I'm, hetero yeah. vibes with that. You're like, I just want to see her but in that I, suit. For me, it's like a sleigh way. Like, yeah. if, in my head, like, that's what I would be if I was, like, in a superhero totally. movie. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be Sydney Sweeney, her long hair upside down, like, looking so good. Uh, oh, was she upside down? Yes. Like, she, she was spider. really giving. For the 30 seconds, she was serving. Okay. But if oh a man God. really did that, like, in a movie theater, crime. Do you know who said this? Where did you hear this? It was on Twitter. And then I tried to, like, go in and find, like, the police report and I couldn't. So it could very well be a fake story. <laughs> fake news. But it sounds like something that would happen. It sounds realistic to me. Was mm -hmm. she upside – when she was upside down, did you see her boobs upside down too? It's like a skin-tight costume that covers, like, her whole body. Oh, so okay. you, you – yeah. And it, when she was not – in like her superhero outfit they try to make her it's like early 2000s like hot girl nerd you know like oh, okay like a little short skirt and like glasses yes mm. and they try to make her look mousy but she's still <laughs> hot it was like the worst movie like the ever body. you just can't hide the body yeah i will never be a sydney sweeney hater i don't think oh, yeah, i really respect her oh. people are giving her a hard time but i really like wait her. why are people giving her a hard time i think people think that she's just like not that talented or like not that smart or whatever i think it's the pretty girl curse definitely like, as we say but mm -hmm. She's a producer. She went to college. Like, she has her degree. She's, mm -hmm. like, very business savvy. The amount of brand deals this girl does. Like, she's an ambassador oh, yeah. for, like, any product. Mew Mew, she's, like, the face yeah. of. Yeah. She fixes cars. I couldn't fix a wow. car. <laughs> like, I kind of live for her. I love Sydney Sweeney, too. I don't want to live for her, but I like her. And she handles, like, the sexualization of her very well. Like, when she went to Australia, she went to, like, an Australia uh, soccer game and Every member of the team slid into her DMs to try to get with her. Meanwhile, she's, like, married or engaged or whatever. Is she still? Yeah. And she handles, like, in interviews, like, they'll she'll joke about her DMs. She's like, yeah, I get a lot of, like, interesting DMs. And she, like, doesn't mind being sexualized, whatever. She's like, yeah. you know, I'm just embracing my body. But people will say, like, the craziest stuff about her. So she handles it all very well. Yeah, she probably gets it. And But you know what is wild is the fact that she's engaged. I saw at the People's Choice Awards last night her and was it Glenn Powell? Yeah. Like they were just like, I mean, they might as well have been a couple just like on <laughs> each other and just like I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if it's just like, what I don't know if I'm just getting old or whatever and prudish, but I'm like I don't know. I think you can be co-stars without, like, being all over each other in press. Yeah. No, I feel you. You know? And, like, I'm not trying to be one of those hater girlies because I do feel like this is, like, the millennial people being, like, ew, that's, like, so inappropriate. But I don't know. As someone, like, married – and I guess we have this conversation a lot on the show. I'm just, like, ugh. I don't know. I get it. Like, for, like, you know, for the show, for the movie. But, I don't know. It gives me kind of ick. Especially, like, someone's, like, her fiancé must be so secure, which is true, but also, like – 
Mm-hmm. It's still kind of weird. It is. No, I think it's totally weird. Okay. Because the fact that, like, Glenn Powell's girlfriend broke up with him, but uh, during this whole thing yeah. going down when Sydney and Glenn were filming, but Sydney and her fiance are still together. I don't know. It's very interesting for sure. Mm. It's very interesting for yeah, sure. Yeah, because, I mean, they got the chemistry. I get it, but. Yeah, and it worked because they really made so much money from that movie. So. Is it streaming? Did it stream? You know? No, oh, they delayed the digital release. Because it's making so much money, so they really? they added more footage mm. to the, the like in the theatrical release Ooh, for Valentine's Day. So they added like thirty minutes of footage, and Glenn Powell's like naked a little bit more. In it, oh so, wow! Yeah. Okay, that's good. Equal. Is she naked in it? No, only him. I think there's like a shower scene though, right? Yeah, Where she's like, but you yeah. don't, the only like body parts you see are like him. Really, like wow. yeah. We love that. We love um switch and gender yeah. being naked and i will i met glenn powell once and he was very nice and very hot i can confirm so <laughs> he could have been aaron samuels in the mean girl movie he's so old he's like he 30s old? no yeah. but aren't they all 30s in that movie no he's the guy who played aaron samuels in mean girls was like is oh. young he's like early oh, 20s okay, yeah. just kidding. <laughs> he would have been a good one i'm trying to think of anyone else for aaron samuels i guess that would have been good chris olsen could have been aaron samuels at this Honestly, point you yeah. know probably better than the guy in the movie yeah you look cool you look like a leprechaun today i like it oh, the full okay outfit. i'll take it St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> it's you around love the green? corner. Well, this hat is green and it's raining, so I like my hair gets really right. curly. So then I'm like, I guess we're going green today. And then you were so. like, where did the green shirt come from? You had that already? I just already had it in the closet. And yeah. then did you get the necklace for Valentine's Day? Oh no, it's um my friend makes Taylor Swift inspired jewelry. Oh, so she yeah, she what gave it, it to me. It's, yes. It's a little guitar pick, and it says 13 on one side and TS on the oh other my side. Oh, God. Isn't that crazy? We watched Valentine's Day last week, and then the number 13 was everywhere in that movie. <laughs> yeah. oh, I, I don't even know Taylor Swift was on it. We filmed with this. We filmed this, like, February 12th, and then we watched Valentine's Day that night, and I was like, oh, my God, that's so weird. You're talking about 13 yeah. is your lucky number. And then it was all over that movie, and I was like, oh, my God, it was horrible, that movie. It's really bad, but it's like uh- – it's kind of it's charming cute. in its own way. You know? um, it was those movies are bad. It's like New Year's Eve. We watched that one too. Also charming in its own way. Well, Zac Efron's in it with <gasps> Leah Michelle. Oh, how horrible! <laughs> that alone, don't watch it. But did you ever see? This is so old news, not current events at all. But did you ever see the duet between Zac Efron and Taylor Swift on yes, Ellen? Yeah, when he's playing guitar. Yeah, to promote the Lorax. What is that? <laughs> What's the Lorax? It was like a Dr. Seuss like animated movie, and they both voiced characters in that. Oh. And Joey Grisafa and Strawberry 17 interviewed. No. And Cat oh. Riffick interviewed Taylor Swift what? for the Lorax. And Zac Efron, I think. Where is Cat Riffick? That's a good question. I don't know. They interviewed both of them? Good for them. Yeah. Damn. Where was Joey Grisafa at the People's Choice Awards? Everybody was there, but the not Joey. The People's Choice Awards. You would Should think. we go into that? Or should we just talk about Zac Efron real quick? Zac Efron, and then we'll go into They did the song that... <laughs> What is that? Oh, Pumped Up Kicks, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, okay, wow. You're like, I don't remember. Actually, Pumped Up Kicks. I was like, oh my God, I just watched it yesterday. It took me a remember. second. All the other kids with the Pumped, pumped Up kicks. kicks, you better run. Which better I guess run. is a problematic song. I didn't know that. Outrun My Gun. Yeah. Why? It's about a shooting. A school shooting. Oh my God. Terrible. I know it's dark. Why it's, were they it's singing like, that? I don't know. Shame it was on like them. a Cancel upbeat them. little song. And then I. Uh, there must be something else to it. I guess. I saw someone on TikTok kind of analyze that, but I'm like, maybe there's like a different meaning. <laughs> oh, man. And what's pumped up kicks? Like expensive shoes. All right. Well, dark. <laughs> then they went into a different song, though. It was that, and they went into something else, but I can't remember what I it was. I think they went into like an original, I think. Stop it. Ellen, I love that you know Something all about this. Ellen, I think. That's right. right. It, was, it, was a, it was a tune of a different song, but he changed the words. Like he's like, Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that guy, friend. His voice was so good. It I was know live. he's a good singer. We need him on. Please. I would, I would actually love. love that. Maybe for Ricky Stanicki of the press store. Oh, Pokemon. my God. How do we get on that? <laughs> if you have to have connections. Oh, man. I I'll would get, love to. I'll get the PR uh, contact. And then we'll Please. Just go for it. Well, People's Choice Awards. Joy Gosefa was not there. Joy Gosefa was not at the People's Choice Awards. Wait, before we do, this bear... Babe, can you mention this bear? Someone talk, talked about this bear, and I thought I thought this was like a strip club bear, and he said it's like an artist bear or something. Everyone's talking about this bear. They just like it. I mean, it's just a cool bear. But did you say it was like a d- something, something famous? I don't know, famous. I just, I remember in Christmas, I saw a tree that was like that, like it was like a crystallized tree with lights inside. Oh, I thought it was a famous artist or something. And inside. then I saw a version of that in the bear um, in the mall, and I keep seeing it. And then eventually I was like, I need to get that for the set. Everyone loves it. So anyways, I wanted to mention the bear. <laughs> I wanted to mention um, thank you to Marissa. They sent the RuPaul little people. Oh, how cute. That's so cute. I love the the little people RuPaul. Um, we're on season six of RuPaul's Drag Race. And <laughs> who's that one? The one I don't like. What's his, her name? Yeah, Tall. 
they dress as Rue, but this Rue. Oh, Milk. Oh, yes. my God. Mil- yeah. Milk. Yeah. I, Moses appreciates Milk, so shout out Milk. I, <laughs> I just can't. I mean, it's not even that they dressed as um, men Rue. It was just, like, in general, I don't know. But then I did feel bad because she kind of explained, like, you know, if I try to be glitz and glam, people would judge me, and I wouldn't keep up with these girls. I'm like, I don't know. But anyways, maybe that was a hate, the hater thing. I don't know. I'm sorry, Milk. <laughs> We're, like, so far behind on it. But you like Milk. You appreciate Sure, yeah, I mean, Milk is very creative. Like, I think it's so hard, so many seasons, so many people to be creative. So you have to kind of step out of the box. Anyways, I, I liked it. I guess it was different. I don't know. I just can't with the weird sometimes. Like, Don we're not going to go into our RuPaul segment, but Don just so weird. And I'm not being a hater on it. I just, I can't get into it. <laughs> I guess I need my pretty, I like the pretty <laughs> drag, the Safiras of a mall. People's Choice Awards, which I got invited to twice. Once live during our show uh, last time. Did we leave that part in where Zach yeah, saying was like... Yeah, that was in. Yeah, he's like, do you want to go to PCAs? I'm like, what the hell is a PCA? And then the People's Choice, I was like, no. But then another person, someone's manager, pretty famous influencer's manager, like, was like, do you want to come to the People's Choice Awards and be like on camera? And I was just like, meaning like, I don't know what that means. Like, It looks like all the influencers are in the back. Because you sent me a picture of all the tables, like Adam Sandler, and it's like I don't, I didn't see any influence, including like the biggest ones. We know we love Tana and Brooke; they look freaking amazing and phenomenal. But it's like even though they probably have more clout than like the people sitting in front, they weren't put in front. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I'm not gonna go to something where I'm in the back. It's a lot happening. Actually, there's a lot. There's a lot because you told me you're like. "Eh, it's just not E. It's not that because, look, I wasn't going to go anyways. I just feel just so fat. I wasn't going to go. Honored to be asked, actually. Even though they asked me for the Oscars, I was thinking about this. Even if they asked me for the Oscars, I still wouldn't go. Just I'd feel, one, I'd feel uncomfortable. Two, I heard they, like, shuttle you in. Like, you don't get to be dropped off at the carpet. Like, you have to be shuttled. I was like, no, I can't be bothered with all that. But I remember I, that I asked you, and you're like, oh, no, it's kind of just, like, E-influencers. But some people showed up. Yeah. Like- Adam Sandler. <laughs> Pretty unserious. Someone tweeted, it's it's like, an, it seems like AI generated almost because it's so like random, but it's a show in which awards are giving out and <laughs> me, I try to be as democratic as possible. Um, it's just kind of unserious as far as award shows go. It's very like teen choice, you know, it's like just who, random can, who can show up right. and whoever shows up is definitely going to get an award. So it's very mm. like that, you know. Because who was Adam Sandler sitting next to you? Sent me the place cards. Like that's so random. I you don't said, even. Like, the, the table next to him was Housewives. So, so it random. was all very. Yeah, it was all very random. A lot of Selling Sunset people were there. The yeah. Alphabet twins. They kept showing during <laughs> Adam Sandler's speech. I'm like, I'd rather see again another influencer. Is like they didn't show any. Did they? Or maybe I didn't. But during Adam Sandler's speech, they didn't show any influencers. No, I don't think so. I mean, I didn't watch. I've only I only saw a couple clips. <laughs> it's. I mean, it's. I didn't either. My work doesn't cover People's Choice because it's on like a competing network. Oh my god. <laughs> so I can't I have my loyalty. So I, I was applied just saying for that. a hosting job with that network. <laughs> it's not F or G, but I I DM'd the showrunner because they 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 were looking for a new host. I heard to do chemistry tests, and I was like, "How about me?" And it's like, "Well, I definitely won't get the job. But who cares?" But it's like not a great job because they just don't pay a lot. And oh, really? Like, even if you're a name talent, they don't pay a lot, and you're kind of there from like I mean, it's not it's like what three to six you're there or something like that. But anyways, I'll still do it. But. <laughs> Yeah, they um they're kind of wild. The but but okay, so the highlight of the night I think was when you sent me was the E E it's or the You can say E news. I can yeah, say it. Yeah, okay, yeah. you're not saying it. I was no, like <laughs> the alphabet <laughs> The E TikTok posted the Billie Eilish themselves. Yes. Which is wild. It's wild that a lot of a lot of re- reasons. First of all, it's just literally okay. So Billie Eilish was basically on camera saying like, "What? What was the exact words?" There's a lot of TikTokers so, over there. Yeah. So like, E was trying to capture like I think just behind the scenes. So they went up to Billie Eilish, who was talking to Kylie Minogue at her table. Billie's saying like, "And there's a lot of." And then she notices she's getting filmed, so she tries to cover her her mouth as she's speaking, <laughs> and she goes, "There's like a lot of TikTokers over there." And then the <laughs> face that she makes afterwards, like. Like that was the part that took me out. It but. was yeah, and it was re- they kind of cut that part. Of, I saw it, but they kind of cut it in some stuff. But they were really loud, right? Because it was in their group that was like, oh. Yeah. What's crazy to me is that obviously she saw the camera guy, and the camera guy was like close. Yeah. And she's still, and she knew the lip reading thing, but it's like there's mics and shit everywhere. I'm like, <laughs> at first I was like. I get it. I was like totally like, oh yeah, it is cringe because I I always say this. I've always said this. I'll never go to an award show unless I'm nominated because it is. We used to some get paid and I'm like not even dissing anyone. Obviously, like so many people I know went and they look great and whatever. Like it's good photos. It's good for Getty images like we talked about. So like my first thing was like, yeah, it is cringe. Like why are all these TikTokers there? But then I was like, you know what? They're the reason Billie Eilish's songs are so popular. You know what I mean? They push the thing like Chris Olsen, all those people. I don't know. I feel like I as much as I love to like shit on like TikTokers too or whatever. It's just like they're kind of influential and they kind of get more pull than a lot of those people 
at the table. Not me, Billie Eilish. She's super popular. <laughs> but who was she talking to? Who was Billie Eilish? Kylie Minogue. To? Well, I mean, she's pretty popular too. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I think, I don't know. They're the reason. I just feel like most of them would get even more recognized than maybe Kylie Minogue. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, there's always going to be, like, the vibe between, like, influencers and traditional media. Oh, for media, sure. You know? And I get it. Yeah. Because I think influencers are sometimes embarrassing too. It's like, ugh, why are they there? They don't do anything. <laughs> yeah. But they're popular. So I don't know. I get it too. I think it was just so many any like influencers you know i think there was probably more than like actual traditional celebrities yeah. and i feel like maybe that's why it was a little like well i knew they were desperate cringe. i mean they asked me twice two different people no you're a big guy never once been asked to an award show <laughs> you're so. a big guy and i think now that you're saying you're more selective i feel like the second you do arrive it's gonna be like big news i'm very selective <laughs> i just yeah even mostly kind of like he's like you should go like it would be cool and i'm just like i don't know i just feel i just feel silly like yeah i think at first, I really wanted you to go because I'm like, oh, the Getty images would be, like, sickening. But I heard it was really hot in there because it was, like, oh. all, all my friends that were working in it said it was, like, they tented it off. But there was no, like, circulation mm. for the carpet. So everyone was really hot. And then seeing some of the attendees, I was like, oh, maybe it's better. Because it was a lot of <sighs> – Yeah. There, there was some rough ones. <laughs> I think Tana and Brooke Goddesses, they should be at every single award show ever. They looked A-list. Like, they looked – so amazing like love 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 chris olsen i think he's pretty a-list at this point like he's kind of a staple at these things but mm -hmm. some of the other ones i can't imagine you like <laughs> having a run-in with rachel ziegler or james charles at this event like but i imagine <laughs> <laughs> i would love it <laughs> actually no i would definitely avoid james yeah for sure, for sure. but rachel i might be like hey girl <laughs> <laughs> loved you in hunger games she did win and she gave like she gave a beautiful speech i was happy for her yeah it was cute i liked <laughs> it i was she looked good i was happy for her i think that's the only clip i saw was just rachel Ziegler winning actually you didn't see and the adam I, chandler speech no i heard it was, was wild though it was wild it was also very uh sexual oh really <laughs> yeah i was kind of oh. like even for me i don't know what it is maybe i'm a prude now but i was kind of like he's talking about being he thought he was not, he, basically the joke was he thought he was winning the award for sexiest man alive oh. so he's talking about making everyone horny this year or something oh. and i was like oh wow <laughs> It was a totally different vibe, but I was like, okay, we love Adam Sandler. Yeah, they just had a bunch of randoms. Yeah, that's the other thing, too, is, like, when I saw he was sitting there, I was like, oh, maybe Trish should have gone. But then, realistically, it's not like you're actually going to, like, meet him no. or Jennifer Aniston, you know? No, no, no. Maybe she would have offered you seaweed, though. She saw you. <laughs> she remembers me yeah. from Wonderland. You know what's so weird? Okay, this is so weird. The past three weeks, I've gotten, like – no, the past week. It's not even three weeks. The past week, I've gotten three offers to do two TV shows and a movie, and one of the producers – was a producer on Wonderlust, the oh movie that God. I always talk about that I was doing. And I was like, and, and then when I had the Zoom with them, because it's like, this is like a horror movie or whatever. And it films like this summer. It'd be like after I have my baby or whatever. And they're like, we wrote the part for you and whatever. And it's like, whatever, it's pretty cool. And then they were telling me one of the producers and I was like, and I, it's a famous, kind of a famous producer. And I was like, wait, he did Wonderlust. And then and I told Moses this too. I'm like, I wonder if they, should I say something? Should I be like, I did Wonderlust with you? But then I was like, maybe I just shouldn't. But uh, it was pretty crazy. I was like, hmm, it's kind of weird. But Anyways, I'm going to be a movie star. <laughs> it's happening. I'm getting my Addison Ray horror movie moment because it's a yes. horror movie. And it's um, it's kind of everything. It kind of sounds a little like lit. So it's only a two-week shoot. I think I could do it. I'm also doing a pilot with someone. And then and then the Just Trish studios are being featured in a TV show. What? Yeah, I have to tell you off camera. Oh, my God. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of a big deal. I don't even know if I can talk about it yet. But I think they're going to like announce it in like Variety or something, like the people that are in it. And I'm like the per I'm the show they come to. I, it's, it's scripted. So I'm like scripted. And I'm the show what? they come to to get like I, to get the juicy scoop. So it's like these celebrities. I can't say too much. They're like they're I, I don't want to like give them a class, but they're like celebrities from the past trying to make a comeback is like the premise of the show oh, okay. anyways there's more to it and so they had to come on my show because i'm like the hot oh show oh my god <laughs> and i played myself that's for major something. she's already major. playing a talk show before we have the talk show yeah it's very <laughs> like manifesting like a tv talk show yeah yeah they're like and they're like if you want to ask some real questions you can like if you want for your podcast because there's like five guests coming through and they're scripting it but then they're like it's like a two-day three-day shoot for us in march they're also like going to the oscars and like if you want we can get you into the oscar parties and we can film you on the red carpets for it oh and i was like my god. that's too much even that's what I'm saying. Even then, I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. But if you want to come to my house. So, Just Trish will be making its debut in some TV show later wow. this fall. Wow. But we should exciting. definitely go to the Oscars with the microphone and... They, oh, yeah. They, oh, yeah, they ask. So, like, if you want to go, we can get you, like, a... But I don't know if that means the actual Oscars are, like, just the parties. That's what I was confused about. The parties at. are big, though. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, we'll go in and out just to get that photo, get a Getty Images with and the, go. With the microphone. Yeah. That's like... Oh, my God. You kind of have to. Yeah. I mean, maybe. I was going to 
say no. It's coming up so soon. I'm like, God, I gotta get it out. Three weeks, around. I think. Oh my God, it's so fast. And I, was I like, mean, you've pulled off some really quick turnarounds before, so. That's true. I, I have mean, some I cool think outfits. the celebrities will line up to be interviewed by you. I so too. <laughs> I didn't know you were friends with um, <gasps> Who? Robert Pattinson's um, partner. Partner. What's her name? Oh my God, why am I oh, forgetting Suki. her name? Yeah. Yeah, we go back. Suki Waterhouse, love her. Do you really go uh, way back? Yeah. Are you serious? I didn't even know she was famous. I was like, oh girl, what? <laughs> <laughs> that is the I cannot stand you sometimes because you are more like you have so much pull and like yeah, it's, I am still confounded every I come here and you're like oh whatever like I'm the, no one really cares and then meanwhile you're like you're in Suki I'm not friends with her <laughs> are you serious <laughs> wait why do you think I friends did you comment in? yeah I think it's because I used your sound oh. <laughs> What did she say, though? Was it friendly? Yeah. I was like, hey, girl, I miss you. I, she said you and Moses were her favorite couple. Oh, well, I mean, we're just everyone's favorite couple. <laughs> oh, she's, she's <laughs> my friend. She's my friend. No, she's not. She's <laughs> not. <laughs> we go way back. I was excited she commented on it, though. I did tell <sighs> Moses, like, oh, look, she, I didn't I remember the comment, but I was like, yeah, I think because we just used her sound. But oh, That's amazing. I mean, uh, we'll love her. Suki, we we'll love to come on. We're pregnancy twins. I, I was going to say maybe, mm -hmm. like, Elvis and their baby can be, they're yeah. going to they're gonna be born around the same time, I think. Really? I it's think so. I don't know if they've announced the gender that's everything she's having a baby sophia richie is having a baby at the same oh time God, Hillary Duff. Be, the mommy club's gonna be like i'm ready iconic uh, Hillary Duff has a mommy club i think with like mandy moore and ashley tisdale and stuff i would love to be in you're just gonna be the new one yeah this is gonna be i'm super girl. excited no um we're not friends i'm not friends with anyone famous you know this <laughs> i always tell people i'm like i know no one famous i don't get any polls like the fact that i was invited to a people's choice awards that's when i knew they were desperate for influencers because no. i've never been invited in my life and two people were trying to get me to come but Shout out. Well, I know they're your competition too, but Access Hollywood, shout out. Or are they the same people? So my friend. Is that who, your friend? Yes. Oh, my, I live. <laughs> yeah. You want to ask the question? No, she, my friend was behind the camera. Uh, I know them both actually, but okay. yeah, my friend also loves you. My friend, Stephanie, she, when, oh. she, uh, we interviewed you together, like uh, twice, I think. We For interviewed food, you at thing? Access. Yeah. When you, the both times you came to Access, oh, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. the two oh, of us. Yeah. She also loves you. And she was like, we have to ask Hannah and Brooke about Trish. That so. is, shout out to all the people on the red carpet constantly asking people about me because i think someone at people asked someone also about my friend, me Fry, yeah <laughs> shout out. I see the connections i'm always shook when people ask like your friends with trisha paytas how's that I was like, what? nobody cares it's a headline i live for it though people were sending it to me and it was great and that was kind of everything and then shout out brooke and tana for being yeah brooke and tana um and brooke had the little purse that i got tana so she, you have a pink piece of trisha here it's like i died but i was still kind of iconic i was like thank you and then um yeah they were supposed to come film because everyone's like oh you need them together they were going to come together to do the podcast but i knew it was gonna be crazy because they're leaving for tour literally today as we're filming this and Paige was like maybe they'll come at 8 a.m i was like i don't think they're gonna come at 8 a.m we had it scheduled and it was the night before i was relieved first of all because i was like getting about 5 30 is a lot for me because i would have had a glam but they were supposed to come on together for people wondering why they don't come on together we were supposed to have them on together but they're booked and busy and they're on tour so shout out oh we gotta do that tour video for them i'm supposed to do a tavern video for them for the tour shout out to the cancel tour i guess it's sold out maybe don't get your tickets i think it's already sold out right i think there's only a, a couple dates that have a few tickets I left I think New Orleans has a couple because they added a second show. Oh, so they have a couple. New Orleans, yeah. show up for it. Um, they have no LA date, right? Not yet. They said they are trying to look into it. So mm. hopefully it happens. Maybe like seeing how popular it is. Yeah. They'll probably get like African Sophie Stadium or I something. I think so. Because they probably could. <laughs> so shout out them. And I was, um, I was, it's so cool to see them. It's like so cool. They should have like presented. Or, that's what I'm saying. They, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah. The fact that they didn't have any influencers like present, present. or anything. Like, it's it really, a little wild. It feels, that's what I'm saying. It feels a little usury because they know they're going to post about it. And they'll get a ton of people watching for them. But it's like they don't have them yeah. do anything. And the thing when E, one of the E accounts like posted all like the celebs like showing up on the red or blue carpet and tana and brooks literally, literally had like the most views everyone else of was course. like 500 views and then theirs was like fifty thousand. i mean everybody was posting <laughs> like, about them pop grave everything right with the, <laughs> like of course they're gonna get the most so that like uh, that's what i'm saying like it is beneficial for everyone to be there but it's like okay use them <laughs> yeah. because they look so good and then it's like for you know i don't know i just it's huh. i mean again i get it because they it's good pictures it's good whatever and they met people like i think i saw natasha beddingfield talking yeah. to them like it's cool and then there's some people i just don't understand that are there just in general and this is like no hey but it's gonna sound like shady like like a bryce hall or james Hart. like you know like it are was, they there just to be seen or i think i i think so i think it's like you know the more you're out there 
right the more people hear about you kind of thing i guess you know yeah. but that's why i was like a little back and forth about it because like it is a good opportunity for everyone but it was also kind of giving streamies a little bit i just yeah. think the amount like the ratio was just like too much <laughs> so i'm like literally like there's no digital category they're not presenting it's just like 60 percent influencers you know it does feel a little weird they could have given you know? a category if they're just making up categories they literally could have done influencer yeah. of the year or something <laughs> yes. like that which makes more sense but it's like yeah, to have them, like, not present, not nominated, not anything, like, literally just showing up. Just for pictures. Yeah. That's literally what the text was like. It was like, you know, to take pictures, you can go rock the red carpet, you can, um, like, be seen on TV, and I was just like... Which is cool for, like, it's a good opportunity for a lot of people, maybe but... Maybe I'm young and not pregnant. Or even, I don't know, probably when I was young, I probably would have gone for sure. I probably would have been like, yes, yes, get me at the red carpet, but now I'm like... You, like, four, maybe five years ago, you know? Mm, yeah, maybe. Even five years ago is when I went to the streamies, and I was like... Mm. I was going to say around that <laughs> It wasn't it fun. And even then I felt silly and stupid. And I think like we won some category. I think I was presenting even and I still felt stupid. I was like, this is so embarrassing. It's cute. It's a big production. It's cute, but also embarrassing. <laughs> Just for me. I get embarrassed by everything though. So I literally get embarrassed to like ask for like to order food. I'm like, can you order it for me? I don't know how I'm going to feel eating in front of you this Friday at the movies, but we'll see. <laughs> we always eat in front of we each other. We eat side by side. Like, especially how I eat popcorn and nachos. I even don't like, I told you I don't like to do this in front of Moses. Like, Dip it in the cheese and then sprinkle the popcorn on top. I'm not a cute eater, so... Really? Yeah, I'm definitely not a cute eater at all. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I just want the food, honestly. I'm excited for it. I was like, yes. Anything else happened in the People's Choice Awards that was iconic? Well, we can review the influencer's outfits. Because yeah! I did. I, um, went, I have them in my head. I went to Getty Images. I went through the albums trying to get all the photos. Shout out Getty Images. Shout out Getty Images. I love having a Getty Images account. So if oh, you, you ever, have the account? Yes, I have my own account. Oh, so God. if you ever need something... What would I need from it? How do what do you get? Well, from when you it? when you get your own photos, you won't you won't have to oh, pay for it. I can. But do, isn't half of it getting the Getty images on it? Isn't that? What's that's cool? what I was saying too. Because I was gonna <laughs> offer it to like people we know that like post a little watermark, but I was like, I feel like they just want the watermark yeah. on there. Like, you know? yeah, the red carpet. Yeah. <laughs> but if they're always so like low quality though, and like they face you in and edit them and stuff, I'm like, are you sure you don't want like the high res? You know? <laughs> right. They're like, no, I'll take it. Do you think they know their names? Um, they have a sign. For Before, everyone? yeah, they like either if they don't have like their own personal publicist, the events have their own people managing the carpet and they hold the sign before there was somebody or did someone we knew or interviewed or someone you know on tiktok someone that said nobody everyone put their cameras down or yeah, something yeah that one tiktoker girl mm. yeah when i was going through the album some people didn't have a name so i imagine they just miss like writing down who it was oh my god know? that's like just my biggest like... fear i would just be embarrassed <laughs> even if no one knew i'd be so embarrassed and mortified <laughs> I think in general, I'll just be embarrassed. Also, my legs right now are just like cottage cheese. I just don't want a full body of me right now, you know? I have to wear a moomoo to the Oscars or something. <laughs> if we're going, that's a big if. I need I you to know. go to the Oscars. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It sounds weird, the whole thing. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, so let's see the outfits. Okay. Um, and this is also coming from like me who has like no style. You have you always look sickening though. You kind of turn a look. So I feel like you have the room to talk about. I'm fashion. in my Kevin Smith era right now, just wearing the biggest jersey ever. <laughs> this is the biggest size I offered. Three X. <laughs> you have room to talk. I feel like I don't, but that's okay. I feel like that makes it more fun. I have nothing yeah, to really I love lose. when people review these and like get their critiques and they're literally like nobody. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but like say. <laughs> like you're not on the red carpet or blue why was it blue that's a good question i don't know trying to be different i don't like when they go off color for like the carpet I feel no. like red is it's a red carpet for a reason yeah i don't want a blue carpet yeah. picture and also if you show up like in blue and then you match the carpet then it's uh, so embarrassing. embarrassing yeah so i feel like we have to start <laughs> with tana tana and brooke um tana brooke Tana looked amazing, actually. So good. Uh, okay, it's like a silver, like a silver metallic dress. Her boobs look good. <laughs> I her, love your description of it. I know. Me the accessories not, no, are good. Accessories are good. I love mm -hmm. the bracelets and the rings, and I love the, the the classic like long hair. I like the classic long hair. I think that's so her. And I think if I was to do red carpet, I would do big Pammy Henderson hair. But I would love to see her do hair like Brooke. Oh yeah. Like a slicked back because I think first of all, I look stupid in slicked back hair. I would look so dumb in that. But like because she's like in her elegant. Gon eleganza? Ele what <laughs> eleganza, is it? Elegant? Yeah. Elegant? I love that now from watching dra Drag Race. Oh. <laughs> What's ele what am I trying to say? Elegant. I elegant. Elegant. She's in yeah. her elegant. <laughs> You're just trying to speak in a different language. 
we're watching too much. We're watching two seasons back to back, and it's very hard. That is amazing. <laughs> her elegant era, I feel like, and with that dress too, you could have seen her shoulders, and True. she's just, you know what I mean. If I'm giving critiques, but <laughs> but I love it. I know I get the I get it. That's like her safety, but I think like because she always wears her hair straight, I would love to see it like slicked pulled back because I think she could pull it off. Yeah. Um, with like some cool like Bottega earrings or something. I thought she would have oh, looked. Oh yeah. yeah, but. She looked amazing. She kind of also gave me a little bit like alien vibes, which is very in right now, you know, oh, with the silver. Yeah. I feel like silver is very Y2K. I think it's very like signaling to the aliens. I thought she looks so good. They just, she, that was like the first time on the red carpet where I feel like it was like a red carpet look. Cause usually she goes as like Tana and her Tana outfits. Yeah. And I love that too. Like that's so hot. But I thought this looked very like glamour. Yeah. Like Oscars. Did she do the glam bot? Cause I saw Brooke did. Did Tana? She must have done the glam bot too, I imagine. Yeah. I, I didn't see her. That's kind of iconic. And then Brooke, of course, with like Little Mermaid and a beautiful. Yeah. Yes, I know she was wearing Rick Owens. It's the one designer How I know. Do you know? Who she is posted that? on her Instagram story. Okay, it's shout a designer, out. yeah. <laughs> I think expensive. Like he's an expensive big. designer. Really? Yeah. He's really big. Oh, what's yeah. he designed for? What's he designed? Like Oscar dresses? Like I don't know. Like or gowns. Men. Yeah. Anything. I mean the A list celebrities. Like wear, Kylie. Do you think he did it for free? I don't think it's custom. I think she got the dress. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. She looked so really good. It looked dress. custom. She looked amazing like so gorgeous. she's like the only person i feel like that can pull off the slick slick back hair like that i was just like damn that is yeah you have to the face card has to be like a 10 to like pull off that kind of hair but then after that i would say maybe switch that maybe i would love to see her with like some full oh my god if they reverse yeah like some full playmate that would be hair cute. you're so right you know because she is so like petite too and i just think like big hair and like a petite body like oh, yeah maybe but i thought she looked really good with the pullback hair uh shout out to the bottega bag i love that they brought the bottega bag i thought it was everything it looks so good with her outfit too because you know what i have that same bag and i never know how to wear it and i'm like oh that's good for the red carpet or blue carpet she looked phenomenal they both look good together yeah. i love seeing everything Everyone just excited for them on the blue carpet like i saw behind the scenes and everyone just like so excited for them i'm With like the fans and everything yeah, it was really everyone cute was just like tana brock tana but like that iconic it, it was the it girl moment they are the it girls and i feel always so special when they ever like mention me or anything so shout out brick and tana i love you guys come on my podcast anytime <laughs> and every time i'm never gonna have any more guests unless it's brick and tana <laughs> even though you have like 50 interviews in, oh, the, yeah. in have, the can i have, I have like 10 recorded i know i feel so bad everyone's like where's the interview i'm like i'm so sorry i've been stockpiling i'm like a stupid person like i don't know why i'm doing so many i keep thinking i'm about to give birth any day so um yeah no i do i love all the guests trust um, me i would not have anyone people ask and there's people i'm like heck no so i only have people i genuinely love and like and know everything about we have good guests coming up we have heidi montag we filmed with we have jake and johnny we have Kristen. we have olivia we have lauren um oh lux we have some amazing people and they all got pushed aside for Moses. We said him <laughs> is the priority. <laughs> it was. It was a Valentine's Day. It was a hit, by the way. Thank you guys for watching that. I was shocked. I was trying to shock. The Not water to droplets showed They showed up. up. I was pleasantly surprised. I was like, are you happy? Are you proud? I was so proud of you. That's how many people watched. Yeah, I mean, it was... I don't know. When you walk into it, you don't know what's going to happen and what we're going to talk about. We had no idea what how it well, will I mean, be received. Here, I know. Had no-, <laughs> no, but for me. More for me. Like, but... Um, People were very kind. The comments were amazing. And it was just, it was really nice. Moses is recovering from sickness again. I feel like last time you were sick, people kind of like, oh, Moses is a little, he's a little down. He's a little under the weather. He's had soup all weekend. Just a little bit. It's not too bad, but yeah. I could, That's if, what if happens when you go to playgrounds and gym classes He's and all going. that yeah it's that age where they get sick all the it's time. also the season because I I, yeah. I I was going and then I, I was gonna go friday and you're like maybe just don't go because you'll get sick because malibu's been a little stuffed up you were i've been avoiding it you said you're just getting over a sickness yeah we're also distancing in here so don't ever don't think we're spreading it around to anyone <laughs> but it is it's a crazy time everyone's getting sick i'm doing my best not to so anyways just explanation because some people might be like moses seems sad moses seems down <laughs> No, no, he just he just he just looked cold. But anyway, thank you for all the comments. It was really Aww. really sweet, really sweet. Shout out water droplets. They showed up. They showed up. Maybe you should get the sparklets behind you, the little sparklets blue thing, like our pink one out there. You know, <laughs> yeah. like the trucks. That'd be cute. Yeah, I love those little backdrops on Amazon. Yeah. They're my favorite. <laughs> I love our pink one. We do. We have to use it more often. I guess our gaming. That's videos. a good idea. All right, next on the fashion list. <laughs> um, do you know Haley Bailey? Yes. No, not Halle Bailey. I know the difference between Haley Bailey and, and Halle on, Bailey. I think on Getty Images, they call her Haley Kaylee. I mean, Haley Bailey is a wild name. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know much about her. Me either. So. I went to a fashion show with Joey Grisafa and she, oh my- was the, she was the main guest. Wow. Yeah. Recently? Last spring. Hugo what Boss. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, Joey's still making the polls. <laughs> What's he? And so, okay, got it. <laughs> That's amazing. 
amazing. No, it's amazing. When you're an influencer, and I know this too, it's just like being around for so long, like it's so hard to like stay relevant. Yeah. Like he does a pretty good job of it. You know what I mean? He does try, he has eras that he goes through his like little kitty era or dog era. And it's good. Like I love it. It's just so funny. I just I'm like, when he's like catrific, I'm like, what is she doing? <laughs> Or strawberry, I don't know. You should reach out. Does strawberry ever reach out to you? Um, I'm on her close friends on Instagram, and I I talk to her a lot sometimes. Oh, well, like DM. DM, yeah. Does she say anything like proud of you? <laughs> Nothing really like that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe like, wow, you really you're, you're killing it. You're at ET and just Trish, ET and JT. <laughs> we love her. Um, Haley Bailey. I yeah. To me, I I think she looks good. She always looks good. She looks. She's she's another pretty privileged girl. I feel. Where where it's just like I know she's like a comedian, but I just she's just pretty to me. It's like Madison Beer, you know. She's yeah, like, she's so pretty. Yeah, so it's just, hard to look bad when you're that pretty. Yeah, and so I just can't really look past anything. I'm like, oh, she's really pretty. Same. I think the only, I mean, this is not her fault, but I think if the color scheme of the award show wasn't yes. blue, it would be ten times better, just because it kind of like all blends in. You know, it's very pretty. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, some people are like, oh, wow. You know, it's like Zendaya at Doom. You're like, whoa, OK. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't giving Zendaya at Doom. But, but also, I think if an influencer showed up like a Zendaya and Doom at the People's Choice Awards, Too everyone much. would make fun of them. You know? I would do it. <laughs> you know? That's how I'm going to go to the Oscars. That would actually be like everyone uh, stops the cameras on Timothy Chalamet and then goes to Trisha. I'd be everything. <laughs> I'm showing up to the Oscars in it. Maybe a pink version. That would be everything. What was it? A Mugler or something, right? A Mugler. It was yeah. a, yeah, a pool, I think, from the 90s. Jeez. OK vintage supermodel Gigi gorgeous though i Gigi mean gorgeous, looking gorge. phenomenal nats is also on the red carpet yes. with her um Gigi has the best body of anybody i've ever seen in my life to me she's the prettiest person in the whole world like i don't think she there's really anyone is more the gorge. name doesn't lie she is gorgeous <laughs> And did you see the clip of Chris Olsen trying to get a selfie with Halle oh, Bailey? Oh, yeah, you told me about and it. And then James Charles and, like, Gigi are behind. But I don't know if they're, like, photobombing or they, like, meant to get in the photo. But everyone's just trying to get in this photo. And then they're kind of just standing behind her. I was like, kind of iconic. Kind of love everything about this. <laughs> Gigi, I love. I will. Not, I, Gigi to me is the celebrity that belongs on the red carpet because she doesn't fall into influencer for me. Like she gets like Paris Hilton vibes. Like okay, she's socialite. a Getty socialite. There you go. Yeah. Totally that vibe. She's like, very socialite. She's on the red carpet because she's Gigi gorgeous. That's it. Period. Yeah. I like the black ensemble on her. Like again, I, I was like thought, I was hoping something sparkly, but I guess it's not Drag Race. You know what I mean? Yeah. I guess it's the People's Choice Awards. Like what do you dress like? I want to know. That's half the reason I didn't go. <laughs> I was like, would you wear this? The People's Choice Awards. I like this outfit. Um, if I was like, uh working it maybe I would you wear as a guest i don't know i was also thinking that because the next one on my list is james charles so it was like <gasps> me having to talk shit and then like what would i wear this outfit i don't know something from asos probably i don't know love that i was also on the fence about putting james in here because i, I you kinda, like it i don't I, it's not that i like it i'm just like i hate like punching down and i feel like he's always just like yeah. so easy to like to talk about you know totally i feel that too i feel like and we're so biased because of his past. I'm just like, I really can never get past anything he does. And I think that's why I'm hard on him. Yeah. Because he is influential and people love him and he has fans. Constructive criticism. I think the denim jacket on top of everything else just makes it too bulky. I think maybe if he lost a denim jacket and it was just like the matching whatever he's wearing. That's what kind of Coachella. Like. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like something he would wear there like to the Neon Carnival or something. Well, I think that his ass would be out. No. Well, yeah. This is the conservative <laughs> version. This is the... People's Choice version. <laughs> I wish I could get behind James. Like, you know, like you said, I kind of feel bad for him. I think he gets, like, a lot of, like, unnecessary hate. However, because of his sorted past that he's never really fully owned up to, I'm just kind of, like, it's not even sorted. It's just, like, bad. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I hold it against him, but. Same. I really, yeah. It's but what, what are we, what's, what's he going to do? Disappear? I don't know. You know what I mean? He's still got to like, work, I guess, but. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I just know. can't support it. But if you do, that's you. Everyone was saying once again he looks like confidence activist, like Shein Factory. And I, I oh. this I see the resemblance more than ever. I think the mm -hmm. makeup and the hair was really giving. I think her name he is actually Danny. Should Danny? Yeah, he actually should do. Not that she has a buzz cut, but he should do a buzz cut. Oh yeah, it could give very much snow in Hunger Games. Yeah, the next Chris Olsen, who I thought looked good. He looked good. He does yeah. look good. I mean, period. He looks good, and his glam bot was good. But like. It is crazy. Maybe this is okay. This can sound like a hater, but maybe this is, I don't know, whatever. I had a lot of fried shrimp today, so maybe this is affecting my mood. But I <laughs> don't like that girls can't be shirtless and guys can on the red carpet. I think it's. If it's the same body, like it's the same distraction. So it's like, why does he get to have no shirt underneath? But if I show up to the red carpet and have no shirt underneath and flex, you know, like show my chest, like I'll get in trouble. That's just not really fair. 
I get that. It's not his fault. No. And he does look great. And I love Chris Olsen. But I just get really upset when the I see double standard, guys yeah. get to be nipple free. Yeah, I get that. He's another one that gets a lot of hate. On like on Twitter, everyone was making fun of him for some reason. For the outfit, I think it's just another one where it's like the only thing I could maybe see is, and I, again, I love Chris, but maybe it's just like, is it weird to go without a shirt to like an award show? It wasn't even that. Everyone was just saying he's annoying. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> which is like, yeah, that always makes me sad. I know because there are certain people who always just get that annoying title. I think is I think he's just around everywhere. all the time, he's everywhere. everywhere, and you're just like, Ugh, okay, we see you enough. I love him, but yeah, I get it. I get it because he's at every award show. He went to freaking Tokyo for the Eras tour, then he's back for People's Choice Awards. Yeah. He's at the Grammys. He's He'll probably Megan be at Trainer. the Oscars. Yeah, maybe you should pull like a Margot Robbie and like disappear for like a month. And I see. think it works. <laughs> I think it works if you just like tone back a little. Again, I would never disappear, so I'm not discussing that. I love, I love being online. I get it, but he is kind of everywhere. And you know, people just get they're just hater modes. You know, they see someone everywhere and they're like, okay, we're annoyed with this person. Yeah, especially someone again like the pretty curse. You know, like he is hot. Yeah. So that also doesn't help him. I just feel. I just feel maybe like a shirt would have been good for it. Yeah, I don't he know. always does. Because I remember he did the VMAs and he wore like a mesh top, but it was pretty much like see through. So he's all he's like a body. Look, I guess you know what too. If I had a really hot body, maybe I'd same. Show I was off. gonna say if yeah. I had like abs like this, I don't know if I would. I'm sure if I definitely if I get abs one day, I'll always be wearing crop tops and I would love to show my chest too. Like it's so annoying. Brianna Chicken Fry and what's the other one's name? Um, O'Malley. Um, Grace. Grace, Grace O'Malley. O'Malley. Yeah. So we got together. I think they look good. Mm-hmm. I like the yellow and Brianna, and I think Grace looks really good, and like the black, and I think it's like the good a good length for her. Yes, they both look gorgeous. Yeah, Brianna's outfit looked better in video. I think it photographed kind of like not as well. Like oh. I saw Alexis Oakley do her makeup, and like, Brianna looks like a freaking model. I think they're both really gorgeous. I think Brianna looks like an actual model. She looks so good. Yeah, I like that uh, Grace is going with her to all these things. Like I like that it's not just isn't there a podcast like Brianna? It call, isn't it called Brianna? Plan Bree. So it's based off her name. Yeah. So I like that she brings her to the things and acknowledges them as partners. Yeah. I think Grace looks really, really pretty. I think Grace is super pretty. We never get to see like her full body because like their setup is like you only see like the top, which, you know, honestly, I should have done that. I really always <laughs> regret doing the full body. I love it. Yeah. I need a full like <laughs> desk or something here. Um, but I like when I can see their bodies and I like her body and I love that it's like curvy and cute and she wears the sexy outfits for it. Because again, if I was at a red carpet, I'd be wearing a muumuu. I'd be wearing this. I'd be like just trying to like whatever. So she accentuates her curves. I've only seen clips of Plain Bree, so I've never seen her like glam and I love like the glam yeah. that Grace has. I think I both the of them, hair. Both yeah. of them don't really glam. They're not really like glam girls, so they are very beautiful. Gorge. I'm like ugh, the face card on Grace is like beautiful. Yeah, I, I think they're definitely like the East Coast Tana and Brooke. Yeah, I, think, I see you that. Know, yeah, which is that's the that's the secret I think to podcast now are the two females. It's like the caller daddy. I think when you have the two females that click and get along with each other, it's cute. It's like a girl friendship you want to yeah. be a part of. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? I don't watch a lot of Pan Brie really because I think it's just like different humor. You know, they're like East Coast humor. Humor. They're very, do you know, or is that just how they talk? Where they're like, yo, I don't know. We got to go over here. And like, I feel like that's East Coasty, right? And they're like almost okay. like bro humor kind of Totally. Vibes, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Where I'm like very like prissy, girly, like doll. Same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I need to know about, I don't know. I, I'm more, yeah. I like them on TikTok though. I like, I follow Brianna on TikTok. I follow Grace on TikTok and I like them on TikTok. Um, let's see. Let's speed around these next ones, I guess. Okay. Um, Jake Shane, octopus lover. He's cutie. I He's was happy cute, for but him. I mean, so underwhelming your best friends with Sophia Richie like why aren't you wearing like you know I feel like he should be fashionista you know what that's a good point if right? maybe he's just not because I feel like this would be very like this is very like Oscar coded like this would be me <laughs> yeah, 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 you yeah. know what I mean because I'm like not a style person so maybe he's just not his thing but if Judge so was nominated you would wear some pink sparkly thing or something that's true I'd have to like I'd have to get a stylist or something to Go help on me brand. out I think yeah. yeah but he's also just going I guess he's not nominated so but nobody is it's true <laughs> 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 I would, yeah, I guess you're right. Like, you know, text Sophia, ask for like a little bit of a hookup, it, I guess. For sure. Um, but I get not being like a style. Is he a an Apple baby? Do we figure it out? Is he rich I too? I remember looking it up and researching, but I couldn't like figure out the actual connection if it was just like a jokey or like an actual. He's actually related to the. Yeah, Granges or. Them. Yeah. Maybe a joke. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe, Maybe he's not. bougie. <laughs> he gives Nepo baby to me, but I don't know. Because yeah, the fact that he got like Renee Rapp and Olivia Rodrigo, oh, it's like collab. And Kate McCray, like <laughs> yes. all these people. I was just like, okay, like, who are you? I mean, love. Love. love Literally love. love. Not Wish. who are you bad, but just kind of like like the first episode. Of this, a I was genuine, like, yeah. Like, yeah, who are you? I was like, where did you come from? Why are you so. We have a lot of questions. We have a lot of questions. Yeah. yeah. Was, he, was he on canceled? I think I saw he was going to go on canceled or something. Gonna, I think he is going to go on. They probably, yeah, it looks like they pre filmed a few yeah. episodes before. I wonder if they, how much. 
how many they pre filmed because they're kind of for a long time. I know. They must have had to do a lot. Mm, I think Tana gosh. told us they're going to do some on the road, though. So. Oh, that sounds like so much work. Yeah. <laughs> Touring sounds like so much work. I mean, they're going to make so much money, so jealous, but also like so much work. Yeah. I don't think you can pay me. Yes. You should have them call in when they're on the road. Oh, a little should catch we go up fly with them. To them? <gasps> on location. Yeah, we'll come to the tour bus <laughs> on the boots. What is it called? Boots on the ground. Boots on the, the ground. Boots on the ground. Oh reporting. my God. We we'll have go. to. Tell us what cities they're going yeah. to. We'll be there. That'd be fun. You oh know. my God. A behind the scenes look. Yeah. Oh my God. Do you with a microphone? Oh my God. Like, so like early 2000s MTV. You could send me on the street to interview the everyone <laughs> yeah. in line. Like, oh, my oh my gosh. God. That would be so wild. We have to. Okay, we're down. <laughs> what canceled stop are we going to? Let us know. <laughs> That's a good idea. Uh, that actually would be everything. Wow. That's crazy. I don't think you could pay me even $10 million to go on tour right now. That sounds – I'm sleep all the time. I sleep 10 – like I probably sleep like, I don't know, 18 hours a day. <laughs> I'm always sleeping to go on tour. Oh, my God. That sounds – crazy but okay i we have to do these ones because you don't know who they are jack and jack who oh my gosh okay but for real hand to god i literally was like before you said anything i was like oh my god plain jane is there and then i looked at that and i was like oh my god plain jane and dawn <laughs> and it looks doesn't it look like that now that you said it it does look like plain jane and dawn oh my god like just like show moses oh yeah isn't that crazy <laughs> that's uh, that's i mean that was that's exactly totally like plain that jane. Yeah. that was too funny crazy <laughs> They look good though. Who are they? Jack, Jack and Jack. Jack and Jack. I can't. You know Cameron Dallas though, right? And like, what's yeah. his name? What's the other one? Um, Greer. Nash. Gr Nash Greer. <laughs> I mean, I only know Cameron Dallas because he's in Mean Girls. Oh, but okay. Um, Nash Greer. Sean Mendez. It was like that. Like it. Boy. Oh, Sean Mendez. I know. They him. were a little group. Like it was Sean Mendez, Mendes? Jack and Jack, Cameron Dallas, Nash Greer, Hayes Greer. They were like a group. MagCon. Remember MagCon? No. no. I heard of it, I think, maybe. Uh, I feel like you were out of the loop in that Definitely. era. Definitely. <laughs> where where you know were you known mean? from? Vine? Vine. Just being hot on Vine. What happened to all of them? Well, Jack and Jack are the people's choice. <laughs> what are they doing? They do music now. Um, and are their names Jack and Jack? They really are Jack and Jack. Jack Galinsky. He, he dated Madison Beer infamously for okay, a long time. Okay, okay, okay. Um, he's still hot. Like, he was always hot. He's still hot. So Is that the him. Plain Jane looking one? Yeah. Okay. So, shout out to them. Shout, shout out, out Jack, Jack and Jack. Jack. Um, it's funny that you didn't know them. Never. Never saw them in my life. Never even heard of them. Like, I've heard of Nash Greer, Hayes Greer. Obviously heard of Shawn Mendes. I kind of heard of Meg Khan, but never heard of Jack and Jack. They were, like, everywhere catchy. back in the day. They're, like, the Dan and Phil? I think, like, the straight, like, you know. They're straight? They're straight. Very straight. Oh. I thought they, <laughs> they gave look me a like couple vibes. I mean, no. I mean, that's great. I love bros who are close. I, you know, that's my new thing now is bros that are close. I think that's cool. I like it. Wow. They really shouldn't be playing Jane and Dawn, though. That's crazy. It was very much Why were they there? That. Just promoting their music? I think, yeah. Yeah. You know what? They Shout out to all the influencers. I'm actually pro- TikToker side over the Billie Eilish thing. I think it's weird Billie Eilish said that. I get it, but I think it's weird, especially like knowing there's a camera there. I'm like, and but also the, she's she's like so like young and um, like that's the audience she panders to. That's true. She always pe plays it off like so. I'm like cool and my brother and here we Billie go. Eilish, but I feel like she doesn't want to be in that realm. I don't think she wants to have those as people as her audience like the young tiktokers because i think she thinks and she is i think she's like thinks she's like an artist and she's so brilliant like she doesn't want to cater to the tick ah oh, tiktok and, even though you know yeah i don't know and in her defense she was just at the grammys and just won you know what i mean so i think yeah she, the thing with her right now she's doing literally every single event and award show no matter how small because she wants that oscar mm -hmm. so bad it, even though she has one already she wants the second one that's why the celebrities who would never normally show up to like all these shows like the whole barbie cast mm. and everything you know like we've talked to billy eilish at every single award show even like really small like palm springs like film festival <laughs> like she's showing up at everything and doing every interview yeah because she wants that oscar and she's gonna get it so you think uh yeah i think 90 percent. i think becky g will get it for the flaming hot cheetos movie <laughs> I, I live for that song i think that's everything and i I'm sorry, like I like Billie Eilish. Of course, she's talented. Of course, of course, of course. But to win over, they don't talk about Bruno. Like that's wild. That was the number oh, one song that, that year. What's what Her, did she win for? James over? Bond. Like oh. who remembers the song even? <laughs> that's true. I don't know. No remember. one. And but like Bruno with Lin Manuel Miranda. Like how did that not win for the Oscar? That's crazy to me. She's like a war darling. Like I don't. She can't really do wrong. Saying, she like wins everything. Little, not that she's not. Ta of course she's talented. But I think it was a little bit of like a setup because I was just like, okay, Lin Manuel, who was equally if not more talented but definitely equally as talented with the biggest song of the year like how does that not win i don't know sometimes i get tired of seeing it to the same people over and over you know what i mean yeah. it's like if she already won an oscar for the james bond 
movie. It's like, okay. But it is funny that she's anti, like, influencer because Phineas is married to Claudia Saluski. Who's you remember Claudia her? Saluski? She no. was one of the awesomest TV girls. She was like the Gen X Pen oh, really? era. Yeah. Wow. She did. She was always in little awesomeness things with Lucas Gage. They oh, always... Lucas Gage was in awesomeness? Yes. People are forgetting the past, wow. but yeah, Gee. like Claudia, uh, do you remember like Lauren Elizabeth and uh, yeah. a little bit, it was like that vibe. I forget who else was in that little group, but it was like all the lifestyle girls. Like Claudia wow. was, that's how I think she met Phineas. She was on Raya and she was on oh. Raya because she was like a beauty influencer. Wow. And Maybe that's why she doesn't like him. Maybe she doesn't like her. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she's like really close with Claudia. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe because they were just so loud in that moment. She'd go, oh, a bunch of TikTokers And the or ratio, something. like I said, was just, it was very heavily skewing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on the TikToker side with this. <laughs> Even though I think a lot of them are cringy. I, you know what? Whatever. Like, they're making this lip, like a really good living with a huge following for doing, again, in the best way possible, like, not a lot. <laughs> yeah. And I'm same. I love it. Like, I'm so blessed to have been an influencer all these years because it's like, I don't do that much. So it's nice <laughs> when people are like, you're amazing. And I'm like, thank you. But um, I get it. If I was like super insanely talented, I'd probably be even more annoyed. I'd be like, Ugh, people are so annoying. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I get it. Because it's like, what do you do? <laughs> yeah. But because I'm on that side, I'm like, okay, I'm on the TikToker side. I don't know. It's amazing. But um, when the other Oscars, March 10th? Yes, I think so. Three oh weeks. God, it's coming up. It's really soon. I can't wait to see you there. I'm going with my, <laughs> my new TV show. I don't know. Even for a TV show, I'm like, I don't know if that's worth it. I don't know. Can I tell you the movie? True story. 100% true. It had like 20 producers on here. It's like a movie, the horror film. They wrote the part for me. And they literally said the writer and the director, the writer sent it to the director. And the director's like, when he sent it to me, I was like, yes, this is what we need. It was the Suddenly Seymour music video. And they're like, this is so camp. This is so the character. And I was like, I knew it was going to pay off one day that someone would see <laughs> that and cast me and they all said it they were so excited They're like this was it was so beautiful it was a love story to this uh little shop of horrors i was like wow five years later i want to go on broadway though because broadway is doing a bunch of stunt casting in little shop of horrors so i would love to be on it i could see you in it i think corbin sure. blue is on it right now shout out by the way to janelle and peacock peacock posted me on their oh yeah tiktok and they've been responding to people everyone by the way shout out for flooding it just saying trisha 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 but janelle of all people from trader season two is like trisha paytas because everyone's saying like miley cyrus should be on my, whatever all these people and then she's like Trisha Paytas is like so random and we've never talked her anything which I love I love Janelle and Big Brother she I did love her on there faves. yeah mm-hmm. I like her I, I was surprised she doesn't seem like someone who would like me so that's why I was like whoa I think she loves a blonde bombshell who's like also has just like a mouth that can like you know I think I would definitely come out trolling if I went on the show you I think have to. yeah I was like I know I'm in my new era but maybe just for that for show t- yes like, you know? I, that's the time and place to do it but you sure. said it's filming May someone said that they heard it was filming in may but there's been like no official like confirmation past seasons anything. were filmed in october I yeah think. please push it to october i know we need it i could get on for october god i'd be so good i'd be so good you know why because like i always i always say this it's like sometimes i don't even know when i'm telling the truth and i <laughs> yeah. think that would just be i would be so caught up in it like i just i know i'd be scared no matter what if i was a traitor or a faithful i'd just be scared of everything so i think i'd just be so good I'd be confused the whole time. <laughs> oh, man. And I love Alan Cummings so much. God, he's so good. What did we just see him in again? We saw him in Flintstones, but what else? He was in the second. He was in the sequel to oh Flintstones. What was the other thing we saw him? And you're like, we already watched this. I'm like, but we're watching it again because he's on it. It's like a band, girls band. Oh, Josie, oh, Josie the Pussycat. Pussycat. Did you see it? Yes, I love Josie and the Pussycat. So, and did you know he was in it? Yeah. He's so good in everything. <laughs> I, I really, you know what? I got to delete some tweets though because I Googled Trish Peters, Alan Cumming in Twitter and that's like from like 2013. I shouldn't delete him because it shows I'm a fan. From like 2013, I'm like, oh my God, I want to marry Alan Cumming. He's so hot. <laughs> there's literally, I'm not kidding. There's probably like 50 tweets from like 2013 to like 2018. <laughs> this is me talking about how hot he is and how I want to like be with him. And it's just wild. That was so wild. And part of me was like, maybe I should delete it. It's kind of weird. But then I'm like, but it shows I've been a fan. <laughs> I don't know. I'm torn. I, I don't know if he could appreciate it or not. He hangs out with the cast. Like there's pictures and yeah. selfies of him with the cast. I think and- if anyone would appreciate it, it would be Alan Cummings. I think he would think it's camp. And the traders. I think it's probably my favorite reality show right now. If you aren't watching it, like that is the show to watch. So it is good. good. It I is know. good. We watch it like the Thursday it comes out. I Sam. went on it so bad. And I've been on reality TV, so I qualify for it. You yes, know what I mean? And I see it for you. I definitely see it for you. <sighs> and again, the turnaround was pretty quick though. Cause like, I think it was 
one of the mukbangs we did, I was like, you got to be on the traders. I think it was like three right. weeks or four weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, we manifested And now we're, we're getting there. We're close. And Peacock is liking and responding <laughs> yes. to things. So, oh, man. And they get to go home at night. They get to go to a hotel at night. Yeah. So they don't stay there overnight and stuff like that. So I am ready. But please push it to like October. Cause yeah, I think, that'll be perfect timing. Yeah. The whole family in Scotland. Yeah. Oh, for sure. We already talked about that. I was like, okay, I guess there's like, we could take the kids over there. and. Oh, my God. They would look so cute in a little Scottish outfit. Yeah, little kilts. <gasps> yes. Oh, my God. God. What do you think about plaid. living in a castle with Alan Cummings for 10 days? <laughs> well, I'll be and around the partner. corner, so it's fine. Huh? I'll be around the corner, it's fine. <laughs> a little van ride away. <laughs> He's, I don't know what it is. I told Moses uh, this weekend I've had like really, okay, wait, hold <laughs> oh, on. Lord. My X or Twitter or whatever, it's, it should be called X because my Twitter is just all. It should be called triple X. <laughs> Your triple Twitter X. is triple That's, X. There you go. Okay, I was like, how do I say this censored? It should be XXX for me. It's just all. Clips, like just clips, like two minute clips of just people. And it's not gay. There was a minute I had gay all over my, and I was fascinated by it because I've never actually seen it up close. So I was like, oh, okay. Like, you know, I just the different positions. I didn't know because I only did like three positions. I didn't know there were so many positions for guys too. Just, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, it was very interesting. I was like, okay, that's cool. So I did, I was into it for a minute. But now I'm getting hetero on mine, and I never really watch hetero XXX either. I just don't watch it, even though I, like, made it out, like, for a summer or whatever. I never watched it, so I didn't realize how up close they get. And they're so close, and, like, everything – and mine is so specific. It's, like, married men with, like, a babysitter, and, like, it's just <laughs> – and it's, like, this – It's. <laughs> It's flooded my timeline this weekend, and Moses has been sick, and I was I was kind of nauseous. I got oh I got sick. I did the glucose test on Friday, so I was nauseous. But I don't know. I had all these vivid dreams, and so I was having these vivid dreams. And then we watched the Traders. What was a Saturday night? And then all my dreams were about being in the castle, and like all this hetero stuff was popping up. It was so it was so explicit. And then Moses was like, why does one see like Anne Cummings as like sexual? Like, I was like, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's we watch it before bed, but that was all my dreams. Now was him. So now the weekend is getting replaced with Anne Cummings. That. <laughs> Is quite a plot twist. It was, ah, he's so handsome. Oh, do you think he's handsome? Um, yeah. no, no, yeah. Well, you like young, or <laughs> Moses doesn't think of him as like um. To me, he's so. I don't know if it's the theater kid in him or something. He's very like. Oh, you, you do know, have a, yes, a Ethan theater Slater. kid. I was gonna say <laughs> it's so. Um, it's just like a. I don't know. There's just like a sexualness to him. This probably won't get me casted. People are like, oh, get keep her away from him. But I, I've always truly loved him. I don't know. I've always just thought he was so hot <laughs> and so cute in everything he does. He was in no Eyes Wide Shut. I never saw that movie. Did you? No. I was looking at his filmography because I'm, like, I'm pretty sure I saw every movie he's been in, and it said Eyes Wide Shut. Is that that sounds scary? Is it? I think it's kind of sexual with um, Nicole Kidman and Tom Cruise. I think it's like a really old movie oh. where they're all in like masks. I think it's like those parties they have. I don't know. Anyways, um, my <laughs> luck is I'll get on Traders, and you predicted season four for me. You're like season four of White Lotus, season four of Traders was eight. Yes. But what if he's not the host? I get there and it's like Caroline Ray or something. Oh, I feel like now it's he's so in it that he there's no way that, that he they, wouldn't. Yeah, it's like the Ryan Seacrest. You can't have American he's Idol without a He's so Seacrest, good, you know? and he's so dramatic, and his outfits are so drama. He's perfect. The last one, did you see where they're like crawling through the tunnels? Yes. Like how, first of all, how do they fit down there? I would, I, there's no way we would be able no to do those way. tunnels. No, no, no way. No way. Well, I, I would would be the one like MJ who's just like the second a roach hit her it was like I'm out I was same like, <laughs> no way would I do bugs or those they had mice down there I was the like the frogs the toads I was like no 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 but Michelle did look badass for doing it I was like you Parvati know what she too, yeah. yeah oh yeah Parvati's gone I love I know Parvati. you love her I love Janelle and Parvati that's my two like queens so I, why I don't get it I, don't, I think she really slays in Survivor I think if you see her in oh. Survivor and then you come into traders like having seen her before that was like her prime she was just like using manipulating men she got men to like give away their safety to like the girls oh. and then would eliminate them like because okay. she was just like so hot and she would like flirt with them and then like oh. stab them in the back oh she Definitely is. Definitely different vibes than the trainer is. I did not get that vibe. <laughs> yeah, now she's like reformed. She's like yoga, like oh, peace and love. Oh, right. She said that when she left you because she was always in my truth era. I would love to just be like acting with Alan Cumming, like him being dramatic. And like get the traders, like Fedra with him with the traders. I'd just be like, oh, like a, Hello, yeah. yes. Who are we getting rid of tonight? <laughs> Oh, I would love it so much. I see it. I love it. Did you see a random internet celeb to get in a scandal? The Hot Ones host, Sean oh, Evans. Oh, my God. Wait, this is so weird. I have, like, so many hot topics and we haven't gone to, like, any of them. I know. But this was one of them. Oh, my God. That's so weird. I have, like, Love is Blind. I have Hot Ones. I have the Chicken Nugget Korean film. I have Zac Efron. I have JoJo. JoJo. Oh, my God. There's so much. Kelly Osbourne. Kelly Rowland. Sound of Rusick. Peacock. Matt and Abby. Trader Joe's. Yes, and Alex Warren's on. 
First of all, I didn't know this guy was such a big celebrity. Hot Ones. I guess because Hot Ones is a big show. But yeah. Sean Evans. Yeah, Sean Evans. You don't really think of him like as a celebrity, I guess. I had a friend. Friend is probably embellishment. A, <laughs> uh, Umfi slash an old co-worker that was dating him for a long time. I think like two years. And then they broke up. Did she do XXX films? No. She, what did she say about him? She didn't really say much about him. She was always pretty quiet about him. Um, and I wanted to reach out for a statement. But she just got remarried. <laughs> so I feel like that's kind of weird. She literally just got remarried like two weeks ago. The whiplash. <laughs> so it was just Crazy. revealed that he is dating a corn or he was dating a corn star, Melissa Stratton. And then the day after the news broke, it turns out they broke up. Oh, uh, he, on Valentine's, <laughs> on Valentine's Day. Day. So the news comes out. And then what do you think? He just calls her that day and was like, we're not together. I think he kind of had a panic. Do you think they were actually dating like boyfriend, girlfriend? Or you think he was just like casually seeing this girl because it was fun? I don't know. I get kind of torn about it. They were at the Super Bowl together. They're in Vegas for the Super Bowl. And he was posting a lot from Vegas, uh, but Melissa was never in any of like of his like stories or posts or anything. But if you went to her Instagram, like he, they were always oh. together. She did the hard launch. Yes. Without us knowing. <laughs> yeah. Oh my um, God. And they, well, they started talking in October of 2023, okay. allegedly. Someone from her camp said they were dating for a few months, but they had traveled together multiple times from Chicago and LA to like Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. I mean, that while he did take her he's obviously with her in public so people saw because yeah. i've dated people for like years that like we never no one saw us in public together so it's like okay they're in public if they're traveling they're in so he wasn't embarrassed to go to the super bowl with her especially the super bowl is such a big yeah. event you know there's like so many like paparazzi and stuff like and they it's took inevitable. pictures together there was yeah. posed pictures of them so i think if they were in love though he wouldn't have broken up with her like over i kind of feel like lash. it was an image thing like uh because he's like wholesome and yeah. he yeah which I, is yeah. scummy a lot. I mean, that's what it comes across to me. You know, I think it's scummy, but on the flip side, it's like understandable too. And I think anyone who does adult films, I've I've done it too. It's like not on that scale either. It's like you just, it's just like it just, it just comes with it. Like there's just people who are not going to be okay with it, and it does hurt people's like image at the end of the day. Like it is annoying, but I think it's people kind of pick and choose too. Because then there's people who are like, I think like maybe Jenna Jameson, maybe that can be like mainstream, but. For the most part, if you do like adult stuff, you kind of get labeled. Shamed. Yeah, you get labeled, you get shamed. You're not friendly, advertiser friendly. So now, Sean Evans, who has was that his name? Yeah, who has hot ones, who's like super brand friendly and has all these A-listers, is with this person now by association. People who go on that show are awesome, which is like the stupidest thing in the whole world. It's so dumb, but it's just what it is. And like, mm -hmm. he, but he should have known that going into it. Yeah, like you should have been prepared for it. Like that's why I have to think maybe they were just casually. He just thought maybe it was more of a fun thing and then didn't want it out there like that. But I don't know. It's so weird. It is, this is the timing the second that it gets posted the next day, you know? So scummy. It's so scummy because you knew. Like, you didn't know. Like, that's scummy. But at the same time, like, you knew getting into it and stuff and like that. sources close to Melissa said that it was done really quickly over the phone, the breakup. Oof. Which is rough. You probably yeah. got a call from the network. The PR was like, <laughs> Ooh, yeah. The network was like, Hey, you know, your, your uh, contract says that you cannot do this <laughs> or something. No, for sure. I, I agree. I think I've lost so many things because of what, in fact, I'm like, like, just like whatever. But even not doing it currently, I still get like, because I've done it like once or, you know, did it for like three months. It's like forever that label. So it does suck. But yeah, shame, more shame on him. He knew. Mm -hmm. It's like. He even has like hot sauce in Target and stuff too, mm -hmm. which is kind yeah. of like crazy. Like you just get to that level, I guess, where it's so. Uh, it's like out of your control almost like you're becoming like a product yeah. so i i get it but like you said he you knew. shouldn't have started it then you know no people won't always want the good time with the adult <laughs> stars they just don't want to show them off yeah. and stuff and it's yeah i get it i get it it's crummy though but it's also good stuff like he's doing it but you know it's not like he's the one doing adult film <laughs> yeah yeah, it's more just his thing but uh yeah it was it's sucky i think i saw like adam 22 say something like oh man good job she has good oh b word <laughs> I was like, and it does, it's just annoying to hear that. I would get that as like a guy too. It's just probably annoying to hear that. Like, I don't know. You got to be really, really secure, but also, yeah, you got to expect to lose people in your, like at that, that scale too. You're going to, you know, have to make yeah. a decision, but. Did you want to get into uh, the Kelly Osbourne one though? Since you had that too. I had that, the, 
Yes. Kelly, Kelly. Osborne. Kelly what a Osborne. mess. Oh, that's not. <laughs> Literally. That's it's, not, oh, that's not 2.0. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why? Why, Why does she so have such bad takes? You know what it is? This is the this is the part of the Nepo babies people don't like because they're so out of touch that they don't get why it's bad. Yeah. Because the way she said it was just so like, what's people's problems? Like the people who have problems with people with Ozempic, like they probably can't afford it or whatever. It's just like, I'm just cause so tone deaf and completely missing yeah. the point. Because like, take aside the poor shaming for a minute. It's like, oh, the people who can't afford it. It's like, okay, chill. Because a lot of people can't. Even the people who need it can't afford it. But also the people who need it can't get it because these people are trying to get skinny. It's just so, so, so out of touch. And then also it's just not healthy. Like long term, I feel like if you don't need it, it's like just it's just not a healthy way to like encourage people to lose weight. It's just so bizarre. Even her own mother said that taking Ozempic was like, she was like too addicted to it and she couldn't stop losing weight. So it's yeah. like, your own family? I don't know. It's just she's she's another one that just I like, can't like. <laughs> yeah, she's just so unlikable. Obviously, what was her quote? What was her exact quote? Um, there are a million ways to lose weight. Why not do it through something that isn't as boring as working out? People <gasps> hate on it because they want to do it. And the people who hate on it the most are the people who are secretly doing it are pissed off that they can't afford it. Oh Unfortunately, right now, it's something that is very expensive. But eventually, it won't be because it actually works. So, so many things wrong with that. Including yeah. like – Something that's boring is working out. That's what makes you healthy. That's what gives you life longevity. Like, honestly, that's the only reason I'm, like, not trying to do Ozempic is, like, okay, let me – because I can feel it. My heart fluttering sometimes. I'm, like, you know what? Maybe I just need to work out so I can, like, have the life longevity because I don't think Ozempic is going to give you last longer lasting life. Yeah. That's for sure, you know? It's just, like – Obviously, I'm on, like, the generalized version of it, and it's, like, obviously, it's the one that, like, is not for diabetics. It's made specifically for, like, weight loss. Weight loss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ozempic proper without like health insurance is ridiculously expensive. It's like uh, almost like two thousand dollars a month, crazy, which is like more expensive than rent yeah. for a lot of people. So to make it like a classes thing when that- like people need it for like Mm-mm. their actual health is crazy. Crazy to th- th- just in general for people saying they don't want to do it or they're concerned for people. It's like y'all can't just afford it. It's like girl, uh-huh. what? <laughs> That's why like even talking about it like I am never gonna be like a spokesperson being like it's for every like it's not no. for everyone. Like I obviously to talk to doctors and stuff and it's something that i'm trying but i'm still like working out you know what i mean like i'm still like i don't know like i would never endorse it like everyone should be on it because i don't think that's true you know and i feel like people should talk about like also working out if you're on it because so many people just don't work out and then you can kind of tell the difference and i'm not definitely not shaming but you can kind of tell the difference between people who are like working out and using it as opposed to people who just use it and just get like gaunt you know what i mean yeah because like it causes a lot of muscle loss too so like that's why like with me doing it like i still have to lift a lot because otherwise i would just lose like all the muscle mm-hmm. mass and then it would be like you can see yeah. it in people just tiny and again i love tiny i think it looks good <laughs> but there is you know to promote it that way and to like i don't know shame other people for like not it being on a so board. bad i couldn't believe she actually said it the other thing too is like obviously she struggled with weight and stuff before too yeah. but i think it's different when people have actually been like obese you know like obviously she was yeah. like like curvier but she- when people who are actually like are obese and like had really really the overweight overweight where it was like a health concern you know what i mean like i think it's also very different too so and even looking like- back i see we see old osborne clips pop up all the time it's like she actually really wasn't she was like a little chubby but she definitely wasn't like fat yeah she didn't have those huge bellies or anything like that she was kind of just a little chunky but and I, I get it like it's fine like everyone can lose weight but it's just like so weird now to be on this like high horse or she herself doesn't admit to taking it or she doesn't say she takes it she's just defending people who do but it's also like when people get defensive about this ozempic thing it's like why are you getting so defensive i know people get so so defensive and i'm like why are you so upset that like why are people so upset about ozempic i don't get it. i mean i'm not on ozempic <laughs> but what? it's just like who cares i don't know i honestly think i think people should say if they're on it but at the same time then it does look a little bit uh classist if you don't need it like you're taking that medication away from people who do need it so i guess that's maybe why people don't say it yeah but to me like i think it's very different for us because like obviously like being overweight and stuff too like you would see people losing weight so fast and like not saying what they're on Mm -hmm. and then it was almost triggering it's not easy to lose weight but when you're saying people lose like drastically so much weight and you're heavier and you're struggling with weight too and it's like and people are kind of lying about it it's like so triggering that's why for me when i started it i'm like oh yeah like i'm gonna be honest about it it's still like that now people not admitting to it and so many people we know just like behind the scenes telling us it's so epic Oh, does that? I'm like, <laughs> I so, know. why don't you say that? Because it would make so many other people feel so much better about themselves. It's like, okay, that's good for you. That's not the decision for me. But it's like knowing that, I was like, because it it changed it changed their me- metabolism and body, but it didn't change the way they think about it. Yeah, because they still think that if you don't lose weight by working out or resisting the temptation, 
you don't have that self-control. So they're still judging those people in the same way. So like, oh, you took a shortcut. So they feel bad about themselves. I took a shortcut. I'm not in control of, mm-hmm. you know. So they still judge themselves. But. I would I would be honest either way if I got this. I just did the, I think it comes out today, the bottoms up with Vanita and she's talking about her gastric sleeve that she got. And I just like love when someone's like open about it because then one, it helps other people like to see, oh, is this the way I should lose weight? Because, you know, so people who want to lose weight, they're going to try and figure out the best solution. I'm like, is it gastric sleeve? Is it Ozempic? Is it just, okay, let me just try and work out. Because so many people tell us that it's Ozempic too, like you, should, you have to change the way you eat and stuff like that. It's like, okay, well, if I'm doing all that, then like I might as well just, just change the way I eat, you know, and just yeah. lose the weight. But I get it. It's hard. I don't know. I'm not on my weight loss journey right now, so I don't know. <laughs> Wasn't she the one that said that if you kick all Latinos, who's going to clean their toilets? Yeah. <laughs> oh, babe. Oh, my God. That's all, yeah, that's the most offensive thing that she said. That was horrible. So I'm saying just her point of view is very that odd about a- life wild. And, and class and money and all that. So I think it just along. Oh my God. It comes. It's the same type of. I mean, that one, I, how do you even recover? I feel like at that point, just stay a Nepo baby. Just keep that money. <laughs> I would. I don't think I could ever show my face again. That one's wild because the way she says it too. Even now, when you said that, I was like, "Oh my god!" It made me cringe for her. The way she says it too is with such confidence. Righteousness too. Oh, it's like, like, yeah. Who's gonna clean your toilets? She job? really thought she was like. Oh! She really thought she was standing up for the people. Did someone say? Is that where the? Oh, that's not. Did someone the say other that? The co-host. Yeah. Oh, that's not. <laughs> that's not. I should know, but what I meant, and it's like, it is awful when you do put your foot in your mouth. Like that is the worst. But like. <sighs> What a weird, like, what a weird place to go. Like that. I'm saying, but this is exactly the same place she went with this one. It's the same place yeah, she's it's like going. Really it's like, if you can't touch. afford it, well, you know, it's yeah. the same place. Oh, God, I don't know. <laughs> I really liked her back in the day, too. I really liked her when she had her pink hair and stuff, but, whew, ma'am. <laughs> Nepo baby is rough for her, and she looks good. She's very uh, thin now, and but again, like yeah, you should share. Honestly, if you have weight loss and you were always a big person and you lost a bunch of weight, you should just share what you're doing. If you're not doing Ozempic, like if trust me, if I'm in that gym, which I'm planning on doing, I'll be taking videos every day. I'd be like, this is me in the gym. Look at what I'm doing. I'd be like all over it because I feel like people would want to know. I'm gonna mm-hmm. try and do it the natural way. It's super hard, I know, but I'm gonna try. And also sharing it, you're sharing both sides of it because maybe people will share. I'm taking Ozempic and I'm skinny now, but then there'll be issues. And they'll share those issues. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like share the whole journey, good and bad, because either way, we need to find out where it's going because it's so new. That's true. I'll wait to find out what everyone's doing. <laughs> yeah. Look, I get it. And also being overweight is unhealthy. Everything's unhealthy, so I get it. But I don't know. I'm pregnant, so I'm just avoiding everything. But everything is so triggering. See, everyone's being so skinny. Now. I'm like, oh, my God. Okay. I know. We get it. <laughs> I'm holding out for the fatties over here. If there's any plus size brand deals out there, let me know. I will take them. Ah, uh, Kelly Osborne might be the most out of touch. The, the Donald Trump, like when you said that, I was like, oh my god, like made me like hot. I was just like, oh my god, like <laughs> just who says that? Like it really makes me like so uncomfortable. <laughs> who else said something with such conviction this week? The way they said it. Oh well, we can we can skip past. You probably don't watch it. Do you watch Love Is Blind? Is it the Megan Fox one? Yeah, you said over TikTok. Yes, you yeah. don't watch the show though. Uh, I haven't started this season yet, but I have watched it before. It's pretty good this season. But that girl too with such conviction. She was just like, ask the guy. She goes, who's your celebrity doppelganger? And he's like, no one tells me I look like anyone. How about you? She goes, oh, you know, um. MGK's like wife or girlfriend. I was like, girl, you know, if everyone tells you you look like Megan Fox, you know Megan Fox's name. What are they telling you? You look like Machine Gun Kelly's wife? Like, no, it's so wild. But the way she said that on TV, knowing she has to meet somebody, it was like crazy. That I literally thought about like me being compared to Beyonce last week and me going on Love is Blind <laughs> and being like, people tell me I look like Beyonce. <laughs> and then they see me and they be like, what? Like, that was crazy. You can tell people tell you you look like any per- like Zac right. Efron. Yeah. <laughs> like no, people tell you you probably look like so many people. Place. But to repeat it, I was like, <sighs> and not to say she didn't have features of Megan Fox, but I was just like, girl, what? I know. It is a wild thing. Granted, like, she did look like Megan Fox, like, uh, Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen era. Yeah, a little earlier, Megan Fox. Yeah, like, what was that, like, 2004? Yeah. I could have seen it, but it is like, it's bold. I guess in Love is, <laughs> Love is Blind, you kind of have to be bold a little bit, but then it's like, whew. But she hasn't broke the rules. I feel like if you're going to try and tell, like, hint at what you look like, you're just trying to cheat anyways. Because she knew the other girl was competing against her for this guy. So she was trying to, like, break the rules or something like that. And I was like, you shouldn't tell people. This whole season, they've been telling people what, like, giving hints of what yeah. they look like. And I'm like, that defeats the whole purpose. And you deserve shallow people. And they got each other. She got Jimmy and she got him. And they both don't like each other. So, well, I guess she likes him, but Jimmy. Everyone says he looks like a thumb, and I can't even see it. <laughs> and he kind of does. And the other guy, the other guy is giving his son vibes. The one you like, he's kind of like bigger. Did you, did you see the other guy that she no. like? Um, he's oh, wait, yes, he is really hot. Yeah, yeah, he's like more muscular. The dark hair. Yeah. 
and he was she was his only choice she had she was dividing it between two jimmy was dividing it between two and she, he was he's like you're the only girl i'm talking to i'm like why wouldn't you take the one that you're only talking to him like it doesn't make any sense we we binged it we binged it this weekend it was pretty good i love dating shows i love married at first sight i love all those they're so good <laughs> but the traders takes the takes the cake Definitely, for sure yeah Oh, man. So, yeah, that was the other one was Strong Conviction. Oh, yeah, I had a lot on Dakota Johnson. I guess we covered all that. <laughs> Did you see Selena Gomez once again got a little uh, bit of flack for her social media activity again? No, what did oh, she my do? God. Um, so a fan account had posted a photo of Taylor Swift with her friend at the Super Bowl. Uh-huh. And Selena Gomez posted a crying emoji, like a sad face, one single tear oh. and a heart. And it got interpreted a couple ways, like – Either she just misses Taylor or she was sad that she didn't get invited and was, like, with Taylor. Because <laughs> the same day at the Super Bowl, she posted a lot with Benny Blanco. Um, <laughs> so, obviously, that. she was around. Like, she could have made like, it to Vegas. Here. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's in her love era. So, I don't think t- – Taylor probably knew. She's like, okay, you're in a new fling right now. That's your thing. I guess. But, I mean, I'm sure Benny would had nowhere else to go either and would have gone well, I don't to think the- he would have been invited in the all-girl suite. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds wasn't there, you know? But um, Ice Spice brought her producer Riot, who's a guy, a straight guy. Oh, really? Yeah. But Lana didn't bring anyone. Like, Lively didn't bring anyone. True. I feel like it was a girly thing. But Jason Kelsey. Well, he's Jason <laughs> Kelsey. Um, interesting. I wonder if they're like, if she's distancing herself, Taylor. Also, she needs to just stop commenting on the fan account stuff. Because that's yeah. how she got in trouble that last time when she was, like, defending Benny. Like, she was in the... In the Why? fan accounts commenting a post like you gotta just like not like Chill. especially if your relationship with instagram is already dicey and you take a lot of breaks like yeah <laughs> just don't i wonder if she has some a type of um like personality disorder where it's just like because i get it it's like you can be so obsessed with it and it's like why are you selena gomez who's like one of the most followed people on instagram so rich has a tv show i was like why are you even now at my level i don't ever interact with anything i'm just like whatever i don't like a fan account like i'm not going to interact with it you know what i mean she's just so it's weird it's so odd right like she has a boyfriend she has a career she has all this stuff it's like why is she even like yeah like literally Isn't Rare Beauty with, like, a billion dollars or something? It's, like, she has so many projects. She's so busy. You don't need to fight with a And it's a fan account, and it's not even a photo of her. You know what I mean? Like, I guess if it was, like, like one of her fan accounts that said something sweet, like, that would be nice. But just, like, a random photo of Taylor Swift, like. She's wild. I want to interview her. (laughs) I would love to see that. I wonder wonder if she's okay. I know. You know, maybe she's not. Maybe she's just, like, (laughs) filling voids, you know? I know. It was Justin Bieber, the one who got away. She can't help herself. Is Justin Bieber okay? He was like at the, he didn't want to perform at the Super Bowl. Yeah, I think well he had like that. I forget what he had. What, oh, he had a disease. He had a condition. I forgot where half his face was paralyzed. Oh my god, I didn't yeah, know this. Yeah, it's a serious condition. <gasps> but some people say it was also uh, Black Month history, and the, all the performers that Usher oh. brought up were yeah. Black. Oh, oh, black. Okay. We, had, we had a bunch of corrections for that. Okay, sh- that's one of them. Um, Usher is in roller skates all the time, and that's part Ooh, of the. Oh, so sorry about that. That's part <laughs> that was, of the Atlanta that culture. <laughs> yeah, but um, Atlanta culture. I'm so sorry. It's in roller skates all the time. I but look at the most comments, of the edits, the notes, correction. We got a lot of comments about Kylie Kelsey. Kylie Kelsey, who's that? That's the Jason Kelsey. Oh no. Yeah, but what she wore. So they were just explaining she wore Cincinnati because that's the high school Travis and Jason went to. Okay. In sports Mahomes. culture is pretty common to not wear another team's merch. And I, the I, other big comment was I, you. I don't. I still don't what? know. I said I got Mah- someone. <laughs> what? Which one is it? Austin or Patrick? Which one is the right one? I think pr- probably Austin. I don't think Austin. I think oh, it's Patrick. Said Austin? I think oh, Austin's so like Austin McBroom. Well, we obviously don't know, but yeah. No, I it's still definitely don't not know. Austin because I saw that comment and I think you were confusing like Austin McBroom. No, and you're calling I swear him there's Austin, Austin Mahomes. It's definitely Patrick Mahomes. I know this a thousand percent. I'll guarantee you. I'll bet you oh, anything. Oh, Austin Mahone is a singer ah, who looks like Justin okay. Bieber. Well, you were close. I, no wonder. He's also like, a, he's an, yeah, now it makes sense. Did he go to jail? Austin Mahone? <laughs> Think so. Is he like a little blonde kid? No, he's um brunette. He literally oh. looks like Justin Bieber. I think he does like OF now. No, he's like, wait, but have this... you seen this guy before? No. There's another Austin that went to jail. Remember, he was blonde and he was like I do remember that. What's his yeah. Name? He was like Austin something. Who too. was a, like a he had like uh, underage things. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. I think he's like the in the blonde one. or something. Yeah, I do remember that. He also looked like Justin Bieber. Um, wow, so many apologies for That's all that. Super we're not Bowl. a sports um, <laughs> show. I get it. Okay, well, thanks for the correction, all of it. I take it back. Justin but Lil Bieber. John did confirm they tried to get Justin Bieber 
um, oh, on. So. Yeah, but he said that Justin wasn't at the right place. I get that. I totally get that. Yeah. 124 million people. That's like, that's a lot to. Justin could have done it though. Yeah. But I mean, if he's just like recovering and like that's still true. gaining his confidence back, I see. And I'm not even like a Justin. Belieber. I'm like a Justin anti, but even I'm like, <laughs> okay, it makes sense. That's the thing too. I think Selena's doing too much. Now I'm almost like, oh, uh, like I was so pro Selena and like the Haley thing, you know? Right. But now I'm almost like, maybe I should get a Rose, like freaking iPhone case They're and a lip gloss. Out. I try to get one. <laughs> They're sold out. I'm on the wait list. I was like, can I get one? She also has a new like ice cream out or something. It looks so good, the Arrow one. Yeah, one, but I don't think it has that either. I think like that has like listeria in it. I don't know. Oh, There's really? so many things you can't have while being pregnant. I'm just I, not eating anymore. The fact that Selena is pushing me into a freaking little Haley Bieber I fan. Know. I want a, Selena and Justin back together. I did love them together. They're cute. But I mean, I also respect to Haley because I get like why. Oh, right. Yeah. Are they married? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Wow, people are really wild and for them to get back together if they're married. Geez. I know that's why Haley no, I'm really coming around on her because I'm like it is annoying to like have your ex totally. like everyone still be obsessed with your husband and his ex. So I get it, I get it. So I guess Right. I'm a, that is weird. I don't know. I kinda like Selena Gomez, but she's just kinda wild. Same. So yeah, it's making me turn a little bit on her. But you know, that's still my sister. But not literally. Because <laughs> you guys look like each other kind of. <laughs> I can see Selena Gomez in your family line. I can see that too, actually. Twenty three and me, yeah. we gotta do it. With cancers, both latina oh um, yeah. yeah i love that yeah say something latina <laughs> <laughs> i want to hear it it's giving when gia gunn was gonna be selena Quintanilla and Ru rupaul's like give us some selena she's like hola <laughs> can you say eleganta in latina eleganda elegante is that in yeah okay. i think watch wow. everyone, everyone corrects me it's like, that was good. <laughs> eleganta i love it i don't know any spanish i know como la flor <laughs> Uh, you know it's any too songs? funny. I don't. Actually. What? Amor provido. Uh, wow, you are fake, fake Latina. Latina. I knew that was coming. <laughs> you and Selena. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. I'm Latina queen over here. I watched the Yolanda Saldivar front to finish. Front to finish, front to back. Chicken <laughs> Nugget movie on Netflix. Oh, yeah. Korean movie on Netflix. Stole my concept. Where's my check? It's basically about a someone who's trying to save their daughter who turned into a chicken nugget. Mm -hmm. Everyone was hanging me in it, so I know it's real. I know it's legit because I was like, wow, everyone sees this too. So is that the prequel to your movie? <laughs> oh, yeah, the one you're going to be in. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? I wish I was in that <laughs> one. Um, I don't know, but that's... I mean, no one's ever called themselves a chicken nugget before me. I really coined that term. <laughs> I honestly, this one is hard to ex like excuse, right? Another another lawsuit. They can't. They lawsuit can't. in the thumbnail again. Snapchat, Netflix. <laughs> I'm coming for you. Unless you want to put me in a movie, then I'm like, okay. <laughs> I don't think our movie's going to Netflix. I think it's going to Paramount or something like that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's kind my... of. Is that big? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I what's work... on Paramount? Is that the what are we watching? Oh, Drag Race. Old yeah, seasons. I, my company is Paramount. What do you mean your company? Like the company I work for is Paramount. Really? My email is Paramount. Yeah. Boosh. Do you email people from <laughs> All that in account? the family. Yeah, I do actually. <laughs> really? Yeah. I love that. That's what I always check when anybody emails me. I just like look at the app mention. I'm like, that's okay. what I figured. So that's why I always use that one. That's definitely because then you know stuff. it's like legit. Yeah. Like it sounds like we're from ABC. It's like, is it at ABC.com? <laughs> okay. That's how you guys should always know. I just tell this to my mom. I tell this to everyone. Cause she'll always think she gets like letters from Bank of America and it's like at X Z Y one two. I'm like, no, that's it'll say. So if you get something from like NBC, make sure it says NBC or something. Yeah. I don't know. People, to me, it's easy, but I guess for some people, they just don't know. Um, we have the JoJo, but I guess that's at the end. What are the ones we you got? Save that. Yeah. Oh, everyone wanted us to talk about the UFC CEO walking off of Howie Mandel's podcast. But then I realized he's a UFC CEO. It's not very like us coded. But oh, I saw it. But someone else said it was a stick. Dana White. Yeah, Dana White. Well, which Dana I White. heard Dana White was like, oh, a doll. And then I saw that it was like this a man. Doll? A doll. <laughs> what? <laughs> like a girly. Like I was. Oh, it's a doll. It's a girly. Oh, uh, Dana White. Yeah, I was like, oh, how he probably offended some cute girl. But then I saw it was just like a, the UFC I CEO. I think it was, was a like, stick. Uh, someone said because it was just like an intro, and the guy walked out. Right. Yeah. I think he was being funny or something. Do you see it? Yeah, because it it wasn't. Like, no, nobody triggered it. He just sat there and he was like, I'm so done with doing this podcast and yeah. got up and left. So, I don't know. You know what's crazy to me? Is, I always say this every time I talk about Howie Mandel. It's like, he had a talk show where he was like interviewing Drew Barrymore when she was like seven years old. And I'm just like, was it Drew Barrymore or was it, oh, wait, maybe it was someone else. It was someone famous when she was really young. And I was just like, that's so crazy to me that he had like this late night talk show and he was so mainstream and so popular. And he's doing this podcast. Like, it's so weird to me. Because he's so successful in everything he does, and this is like obviously not 
Well, I think it. I think he sees what we see. You know, the real future of podcast. Like we call it podcast, like it's light, but this is the new radio slash TV shows. But like he has and, radio and TV shows. Like he can do something. So right, much but more I think mainstream. he's trying to stay up with the time and kind of carve a place for the new media for himself and maybe his daughter. Maybe he's trying to help her out. Okay, I don't know. I don't get it, but. I think if I'm on America's Got Talent, I'm not going to do this podcast. That's for sure. <laughs> he seems to be one of those that uh, workaholics. I think he just likes to work 24-7. Okay, uh, good for him, I guess. I guess people asked why he walked off, and he just said he is over being on podcasts. He hates when he opens Instagram. <laughs> Every time I turn on Instagram, I'm on an effing podcast. No more podcasts, please. Why did he go on it then? That's what everyone said. <laughs> Maybe somebody in his team told him, like, yeah, this is the day you're going to be there for it. With oh, Howie Mandel or maybe he thought like, yeah, Howie Mandel. It's like, okay, it's like a TV show or something. And he shows <laughs> and up like, and it's like this. It's like in this like little tiny room <laughs> with one person running a camera. I was like, uh. <laughs> he was over it. That's for sure. I get it. I mean, it is crazy how everyone has a podcast. But it is like the new wave. It's like having a TikTok. It's like having whatever. Like everyone just has a podcast. It's crazy. It is like weird and like annoying. Do you, speaking of... <laughs> This, you know, this couple, I always talk about them, but you probably don't know them. Matt and Abby. I don't, I only know about them when you, cause you mentioned them. Okay. Well, they have the unplanned podcast and they just have like really hot takes. So maybe that's why they're very just polarizing in the sense they're kind of like the LeBrant family where they're like, they just have really hot takes. You know, they talk about like people who name their kids unusual names and how like annoying it is and like those kids, whatever. Matt released a song called Still Not Enough and it's basically like a whole song about like, how everyone says his life is perfect. He has a perfect wife and kids and all this stuff like that. And he's like, but it's still not enough for me. And I'm like, if that, if you're a couple's podcast and you wrote a song like saying that, like I have everything and it's like still not enough. Like, I'm like, wouldn't your, like that'd be like me and Moses, right? We're dating and I write a song because the intro of it, the intro it's on his TikTok is basically himself talking to himself. He's like, your wife is so hot. He's like, yeah, I know. You have the perfect kids. Yeah, I know. You have a podcast successful. Yeah, I know. And then it goes into him singing and he's like, I have it all, but I still want more. This isn't what I want. It's like not enough. It's like all this stuff like that. And I was just like, that is so weird. Like your brand is being a couple and you're writing this song and using your relationship and your kids in the beginning of it and being like, it's still not what I want. It's still not anything I want. Ew. Right? Yeah. Everyone was saying that on TikTok to like, it's kind of giving me the ick. And they've always kind of given me the ick. And all the comments were like, is Abby okay? Is she good? Like I get writing like heartbreak songs when you're not heartbroken. Like Alex Warren always writes heartbroken songs or whatever. And he's been in a relationship forever. But he like doesn't use his like current relationship to like relay that message. I don't know. It's just like so weird. And I think because they are so couple based, it's like. I don't know. I just see their clips all the time and they always just have the worst takes to me. And every time I watch this, I'm like, okay, like <laughs> there's certain podcasts that just have horrible, horrible <laughs> takes time and time again. And that's why I'm saying the podcast in general, I think that the podcast in general is dangerous for most people because once that stuff is out there, it's out there forever. And unless you're someone like me, who's already just like used to being canceled or people like not liking you, it's just like for these people who are just like regular people, I think it's like so risky to put <laughs> oh, this thanks. your whole life out there and to give you these opinions. You know? <laughs> I don't know. It's so weird to me. And that couple, I'm like, God, they're just their takes are so hot, and then the song I was like, and it's a serious song. He's like, I'm on Spotify, it's all this stuff, so he's like, it's a serious song, but I don't know. If my partner did that, like, had that song, I would immediately think like, oh, you're breaking up with me, or like, we're divorcing. <laughs> like, that's what it comes off as. Like, if you're, if you're not fulfilled, like, in this relationship, yeah. like, and you still are searching for more, then obviously, if I'm not enough, then why are we together? Right. And it's one thing to feel that way, but it's another thing to do a whole song, a song about, about it. it. And that, the only thing I can think is like rage baiting to get the streams. But would he do that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They're so like to me, that's like not their vibe. To me, their vibe is like LeBrant. They had LeBrant's on. So it's very like wholesome. We're a couple. We have kids at a young uh -huh. age. So I just thought it was like really weird, especially when you do have kids. Again, it's like okay to feel that way. But it's like if I wrote a song right now and be like, this isn't what I wanted. <laughs> this all is like I know. overwhelming. <laughs> As a kid to hear that, I'd be like, yeah. What the? It's like a postpartum song. Yeah, I mean, I guess men go through postpartum, so maybe he's feeling something. I'm going all <laughs> weird. It's weird. It's wild, but I don't know. In general, it's like there's certain people I see, and I'm just like, okay, I don't know. But the podcasting isn't for everyone, but technically it's for <laughs> everyone because literally everyone is doing it. I see some podcasts with literally like a thousand views getting like sponsors after sponsors. I'm like, just what is happening? God, I'm really just not sponsorable. <laughs> One day, shout out Adam and Eve. They didn't sponsor this video, but shout out Adam and Eve that one day. <laughs> Honestly, that's all we need. That's going to be my song. All I need is Adam and Eve. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, maybe that one. They sponsored one of my music videos. I think they did Freaky for me. It was a big oh, video, that's everything, too. yeah. Yeah, they have a little shout out in that one. <laughs> Kelly Rowland walking out the Today Show. Oh, yeah. That was <laughs> Well, that's another wild one to me. She was at the uh, GMA studios and uh, she was supposed to host the fourth hour with Coda. And she shows up, right? She shows up and um, the dressing room wasn't big enough. So she walks out. 
Yeah, because I guess the bigger um, the bigger dressing room was res- uh, J Lo was in, and she was had already gotten there earlier. <laughs> and I guess the is it today today right or GMA? I forgot. Oh oh, did I say GMA? Oh god, today? today I think it's today. Yeah, I think you're right. yeah. The green room is too small. I guess I heard that like <laughs> the green rooms there are like notoriously very very tiny, mm-hmm. like closet size, it's which like makes old. sense. Yeah, yeah, that building is so tiny. Like even SNL, because like w- uh, when I worked at NBC, I worked at that office for a week in our we shared a floor with snl and like you literally take the wrong door and then you're at snl and it's tiny like it's giving yeah. like gesture studios like it's so small have you yeah. been yeah yeah it was on the tour i haven't gotten like it's yeah so tiny so little so small and even but even like wendy's dressing rooms are small like it seems like new york in general like broadway broadway dressing rooms are like notoriously yeah. small like you're just like shoved in there i guess she wasn't <laughs> she's just like i'm not it's dealing with this and just left I guess. how are you gonna just leave though when you're gonna like it's not even like she was a guest she's like gonna host the show yeah who stepped in was it rita ora rita or at the last at the last second Rita Ora came through and filled in for Kelly because also you're like hosting the show so it's not like you're in there that long like and it they is try wild. to accommodate her they try to give her like more dressing rooms or something for her people uh huh I was like, Kelly, of all people, I was like, she seems like down to earth. You know what I mean? I was just like, why would she leave like high and dry like that? That's so weird. Especially that's pretty big. Today show, co-hosting with Coda is kind of big. But also with J-Lo's there, who knows? J-Lo probably J-Lo's saw the, the problem. She Everyone's probably like, saw. <laughs> that, not J-Lo. Just getting a dresser over me. This is all just like my imagination. But I can see like they showed J-Lo her. She's like, no, I need the bigger one. And then mm-hmm. they have the one for Kelly. Can you I like, can you see something mm-hmm. like that happening? Totally. And then yes. Kelly shows up. She's like, wait, this isn't the she's one like, I was supposed to. I'm a singer. I can actually <laughs> Saying, like, why am I not getting this room? <laughs> Jayla seems to be the common thread. I try to watch her little movie and I couldn't. Did I, you watch it? No, I won't even attempt. I'm just a, I'm just a hate J-Lo hater. I'm, yeah. I just can't get behind Same. it. Same. I think most people kind of are. I think yeah. kind of like, um, she doesn't have any, like, redeeming, likable qualities lately. She looks good, but that's about it. But even, like, when she, like, addressed, like, the AO at a berry thing and uh, I think Variety mm-hmm. – and then she's like, oh, Ao, it's okay. Like, Ao came to me crying at SNL, really hyping up the Ao came, like, groveling, crying. It's like, she's like you don't have to say she, that. She said after she saw me perform, she was, oh, my God, I didn't, I didn't know until I saw you perform. Everyone's like girl okay is this real <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did this actually happen <laughs> or if ao won at me for a reason like right. I, so like wow it's like i wouldn't i wouldn't have apologized but that is wild god that would be so wild it's like i, I guess you, hmm. the cool girl thing to do would have been like oh like you know she's just a comedian like it's just water under the bridge it totally was you yeah. know what i mean like but instead to make it be like oh she came crying to she me she came like, crying and when she saw me perform she's like oh my god now i get it you are a performer like j just seems like she has a lot to prove all the yeah. time. Like Ben Affleck in that Duncan commercial. Did you see they asked Mark Wahlberg why he wasn't in it? No. What did he say? Yeah. Um, it was the day I think it was Ash Wednesday too. So she had like ashes on his head from church. I was like, this is why you're not in it. Because you're just so – and it's cool to like love your religion. I'm not dogging on especially Catholics. Shout out to Ash Wednesday Catholics. But it's a reason. Like he's so like outspoken about his religion and like how he regrets doing like boogie nights and all stuff like that. It's like that's probably why you weren't asked to be on it because you're just like separating so many people. I can't get behind Ben Affleck. I don't no, I just don't. I don't yeah, vibe with he's him. not really for me either. This is dicey. But didn't Mark Wahlberg like have hate crimes in his past? Oh, oh yeah, his is what I keep forgetting about that too. Oh my god. And people, it's so crazy how like there's like real victims of like a lot of, oh especially men in particular, and like you know. They kind of just keep it moving and still have careers and you're stuff. You're so right. Actually, you're so right. Because I forget about it even. I'm just like, well, you know, he's religious. He's, he's a lot, whatever. But, like, yeah, he – again, that again, that's why it's so annoying because cancellation – cancel culture just gets, like, wrapped up in, like, everyone just gets canceled and lies. And it happened years ago. But, like, his was, like, he actually, like, physically injured someone, right? Wasn't it, like, an Asian an man? Asian, I believe, yeah. And, like, really physically hurt him. And it's just like, okay – it was a straight up hate crime and yet still gets all these like accolades and glory it's just like i'm sorry no religion no jesus like can like give you that forget well they can give you forgiveness we can't here on earth you know what i mean that's just so wild to me how it's just like we still love mark Wahlberg. he's in daddy's home with will ferrell it's like okay when he was 16 he um was harassing black kids and calling them racial slurs and throwing rocks at them and that case was settled oh my God. that was in 1986 in 1992 he repeatedly kicked a man in the face and fractured his jaw, and that was also settled. Oh my God. And then in 1988, he had a nearly fatal assault on two Vietnamese American yes. men. Over the course of a day, Wahlberg knocked one man unconscious with a wooden stick and punched the other, a Vietnam War veteran, in the eye. And he admitted to police that he attacked the first victim while making a series of anti-Asian remarks. I what? mean, that's crazy. That's but like he's still like. 
No, but those are like insane. That's, that's like <laughs> yeah, that's wild. <laughs> those aren't those aren't like jokes. <laughs> it's like you literally Actual, hate almost crime. killed someone. Like what? That is crazy. And he wasn't ninety two. He's not so young because wasn't that like fear? Like he's like in his twenties, right? So it's not like even sixteen. I mean, regardless age, whatever, it could be a twelve year old, and it's like okay, you have some issue. But like sixteen too, it's like what are you? doing? I mean, to, like physically to throw rocks at people, like what? Yeah, that's wild yeah that's, yeah that's a problem like i don't think those things should be ever forgivable by the public to and be in these mainstream movies i like, think he was just at the gym today they were playing a movie of him and tom holland i think he literally was just in a movie with tom holland last year he's in one right now that he's like promoting yeah that was crazy Shit. and you know what i like too it's like you know you just forget about these things and i think now he's super religious so he's under the guise of like being changed yeah. and all stuff like that but it's like good for you but at least people have like lifetime of trauma because of you like uh-huh Go retreat somewhere, you know? Like, I don't know. Don't do movies. Oh, that is crazy. <laughs> Ew. I hate that so much. Oh, God. I forgot. He might be the ickest. He gives me the biggest ick, maybe. Yeah. Because, like, what other famous person has, like, hate crimes in their past? <laughs> I know, that is, like, You serious. know what I mean? Like, that's... It's one thing to have controversial stuff, but it's, like, almost, like, unalive, like, to beat someone. Yeah. Is very well, and, and admitting to, like, just saying racial, racial slurs, like, there's not even an incident. You're just, like, I'm just beating them up because yeah. they're Asian. <laughs> oh, my God. This world... <laughs> See, people look past it. They're like, oh, he's good looking. He's yeah. funny. He's this. I guess that's why he's not in the Duncan commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Because it was at least Duncan <laughs> has some freaking morals around here. They have some. Because it was like Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, and then there was like a who's is there a guy that's a famous football player from Boston? Oh God, My, he's, don't tell me to have. He's <laughs> huge say the wrong though. Name. Like, may, is it Peyton Manning? Oh, that sounds right. I yeah, someone from Boston was also in it. <laughs> and then the Good Morning America something. Like, Why aren't you in it? <laughs> oh, I don't know because I hated every single race from the age of sixteen to twenty-five. That's crazy. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, sick. Ew, I don't like him at all. Do you know who Bridget Mendler is? I feel like you don't. Sounds familiar. She's from. Do you know Good Luck Charlie or Lemonade Mouth? Like, good luck, Charlie. She's, like, the baby or something? She was not the baby. Oh. She was the older sister. <laughs> no, I don't know. She's a Disney Channel star. A lot of people wanted you to interview Bridget Mendler, actually. So okay. that's the only reason I, why Will I brought it on? up. <laughs> um, well, she's one of the most, like, beloved, like, Disney Channel stars. Oh. I think because she kind of, like, did her thing. She released really good music, and then she kind of, like, disappeared. Um, Where is she now? Well, today it was just revealed that she is a Disney star turned space CEO. She launched her satellite data startup. Yeah, I don't think it's just just coded <laughs> to have an astronaut on here. <laughs> I think even if it was like Buzz Aldrin, I'd be like, no, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, what would I ask? So tell me about NASA. Honestly, no offense to her, not her specific, but like an astronaut might be the most boring person today. I know that sounds crazy, but like, I wouldn't want to know about like your space engineering day. You know what I mean? Like, I honestly, I don't know if it's a hot take, but I agree with you. I'm just not yeah, intrigued by space. No. It's some sometimes the less you know, the better, and that's something I just don't want to know about. Yeah, I think I'd rather date a car salesman or something. Like, what car do you sell today? Because <laughs> yeah. space is just like, oh yeah, we did intergalactic switches on the panel. I'd be like, okay, it's just so unrelatable. Like, I just don't smart. It is very smart, <laughs> you know, but not my cup of tea. Uh, uh-uh. like every time there's like a little launch or whatever, you know, people get excited to yeah. see like them put a rocket in the air or, or no. whatever I, I just don't and why do we need to go there right someone just asked was it buzz aldrin i saw someone ask like mm, how come no one's been to the moon since you <laughs> and that's a good point it's like why is only two people gone to the moon <laughs> has that been all that's yeah been there? Oh. no one's been there no one else has been there we just stopped going there maybe it's kind of boring like what else is there like okay we moon. saw it yeah, now they're like, trying to go to mars has anyone been to mars it goes back to cube Kubrick, he, they oh. said that he faked the moon landing. He filmed it. Oh. <laughs> but that's not real. They went to the moon. Supposedly. I mean, oh. it's it's very, you know that NASA lost all footage of going to the moon. <gasps> they had like libraries of VHS tapes and they recorded over okay, it. that's weird. That's what I'm saying. There's all weird stuff, but um, it's odd, the whole moon thing. Maybe the moon doesn't exist. That's why we need Bridget Mendler to explain <laughs> the moon, I guess. I have no idea. I don't get the moon because the moon and the sun are the same thing. I don't think they're the same thing, no. Like I think the sun is a, a a ball of gas, a star, and the moon is a rock. <laughs> I don't Just know. floating in this space. <laughs> and what is Mars? Is Mars flames? Mars is a planet, right? But is it like in flames? Or I don't is think it hot? it's that hot. I think it's cold on Mars. Or someone said they found water on Mars. Is it yeah. a rock? Science to me is just so stupid. <laughs> it's just so dumb. I just don't get it. And again, shout out to the scientists. Thank God we have you. But like. But it's also like what good does 
come from studying other planets, right? I guess yeah. I guess the, the whole thing is like, oh, if you know, Earth runs out of resources, go to another planet. I'm like, at that point, just call it a day. Also, like, we're not gonna be here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I'm like, I, I just hang it up. Like, I don't, I don't need I to go was, to Mars. There's something about black holes where it could all just suck us in. Like, you know, like oh the sun. If the sun had a black hole, we'd all just be sucked in there. So like, okay, one day it's gonna happen. Yeah. The rapture, whatever you want to call it. And I think a meteor passed by earth or something and everyone was like don't worry it's so far off but i'm like even so it's like what are, what the hell are we gonna do if a meteor yeah. hits you know doesn't make any sense the craziest to me is people study like dinosaurs i'm like <laughs> oh, why are we doing this why are we, we wasting been there, time done that. Yeah. like let's see these bones <laughs> why? it's so weird i guess space could be the future but the dinosaurs That's are true like what's i mean we already know so much about dinosaurs Aren't we good? Like, at what We're point good. are we good? Watch the Flintstones sequel. They talk <laughs> about the guys like, I'm going to extinct all the dinosaurs. I'm putting water to kill them all. And everyone's like, ah, ha, ha, ha. And he keeps mentioning it that thing. And everyone's like laughing at him. And I'm like, well, I guess he did it. I guess that's the joke of it, right? I guess. I didn't really get it. They kept having this guy come in and be like, I'm going to kill all the dinosaurs. And everyone's like, ha, ha. But I was like, what is the joke? I guess he did it. <laughs> they went extinct. Alan Cummings plays an alien in that movie. And he plays like a Mick Jagger type. I didn't know it was him as the Mick Jagger type, too. He's like, mm. I know that was another one. <laughs> oh God, it's, I love him. Okay. <laughs> Lately, I've just been, I don't know what it is. I think the kilts and his outfits and I just love him. I think it's the XXX account. The XXX account mixed with watching trailers. <laughs> bisexual King though. I love that. I Googled him. He had, oh, he, was, he, was he was married oh, okay. to two women and now he has a partner that's male. I just like all of it. And I like his. Pies de resistance. Is that right? I don't even know if I use that right. What were you even trying? I don't know. It's his, it's his je ne sais quoi, maybe. There you go. That sounds He said better, something yeah. in French this last episode of Traders, and I forgot what it was, but it was kind of everything. <laughs> All right. Should we talk about JoJo? Yeah. Or no, no. This is a wild. I have five note cards of JoJo. I know the, the article on it was a lot. It gets me hated. Rolling Stone just an article on JoJo Siwa. Okay, quick question, because you are also a journalist. How do they pick their topics? Because this is the same, like they they did David Dobrik's like expose. They kind of did one, like, you know, a couple oh, years ago. Oh, the same author. Like, yeah. Same, how um, are they picking topics? Or do you think she's assigned to it? Or you think? I don't know how it works at Rolling Stone. I will say in general, you kind of get assigned a beat. And usually it's like a beat that you have interest in slash have like a lot of, a lot of knowledge and connections to. But who even comes up with like, this is the, this is a story. Do you think like the OMG pop girls went to Rolling Stone or? I uh, I could see that honestly, especially when you have like this exclusive like story or whatever. Like you kind of pitch it around first. Like you, if you know, like say if they already had like a relationship where they had met her before, or just like saw that she covers influencers and then just like pitched Reached it. Out. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Can I pitch myself to places? Yeah, I mean that's what PR does, but you can just do it yourself. Oh my God. I would feel, again, I know it's normal. I feel so stupid. I'd be like, I know. Especially if someone said no, if I like, hey, you want me on here? And they're like, absolutely not. <laughs> I know it's the worst. We'll pass at this time. I'm like, oh my god. That gives me such a kind of embarrassment. Oh my god. I couldn't imagine going to like a publication. Be like, do you want to write something about me? <laughs> Cringe. Um, but love when they do. Love, love, love when they do. So Rolling Stone did an article about these OMG. Pop, it was the X O M G pop. X O M G pop. X O M G pop point. girls. Which I didn't know too much. But I did do a deep dive after this. I started watching like clips from the reality show. I just didn't know too much. I knew it was this like little this. Girl group, but like really young. Like, what are the ages? Like nine to like twelve or something. I think so. I didn't know they were formed by a competition reality show. Like, I did, I thought they were just like kids that JoJo knew or something like from her studio. But they were formed from a reality show that JoJo and her mom Jessalyn. Do you know what channel it was on? I don't even know. I guess it was some. I think I thought it was digital. I don't think it was a network. Okay. Um, yeah, because you didn't. I never heard much about it when it came out. Yeah, the ages were eight to fourteen. Eight. 8 to 14. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're starting this girl group, and they did it by competition reality-based show. And what, four, I think four of the original members have left within a year and a half or something, and now there's, like, new members in. Was it, how many members, two members came forward to talk about it? I believe it was just one and her mom, I believe, right? Oh, okay. I thought there was, okay, maybe just one. Okay, I'm maybe one talked to them. Leah was her name. Yeah. Found her on TikTok. I was going to reach out to her, but then I was like, oh, she's still only 16. She's still so young. So I was like, I don't know. But basically just about their mistreatment in this group. And it goes crazy. Not only is it like getting yelled at and like emotional abuse, but getting made fun of for like disabilities, allegedly, and also like not getting paid the money they were promised, allegedly, just like a lot of stuff. And watching the, like, there's obviously a lot of alleged stuff in this article, but when watching the clips of the show, they were pretty wild. Like, they were pretty extreme. Like, JoJo included. I don't know how old she was when she did the show, but 
they're not easy on these kids and they're kids. Like it's crazy. So the article talks a lot about behind the scenes stuff, but the stuff that was actually on camera too is pretty wild. Like the comparisons, like comparing the girls to each other. I went with Joey to the premiere of this. Joey like, is in the midst he, in of the all mix, the scandals. He's, yeah, he's in it today. <laughs> um, JoJo had the studio. It was in Burbank. It was next to Morphe. So this street in Burbank has like all the scenes. Of the okay, they're <laughs> yeah. popping down there in Burbank. Yeah. I want to say it was last year or maybe it was it was either late 2022 or early 2023. And I remember, yeah, it was just a lot of little girls, a lot of little, little girls. Rachel Ballinger was there. Oh. And I, there was a lot of like candy trucks and ice cream trucks and the kids were sh like on sugar and like running around crazy. And that's like the so just the thought of like those little kids like going through, you know, everything that was alleged is like crazy because they are literally it was literal children. You know? Yeah, we saw them. Remember, babe, we saw them at because uh, I can't say I guess it doesn't matter. At Colleen's children's birthday party. Mm -hmm. I remember we walked to the house what was it 20 it was right after Malibu was born so 2022 and we just saw a bunch of little like girls coming in and I'm just like and the whole that was the whole party was these like XOMG pop girls oh and, really yeah and it was just like I mean it's a kids party so I'm not saying anything weird it was like it was just like it was just kind of wild to see them because they were so young and so little yeah and you're just like oh my god it's like so now seeing this in that perspective is like oh my god they're but they babies. were like basically Jojo's entourage because yeah they had nothing to do there they came know. with Jojo yeah, yeah. so Oh man, just like a lot to get the other side. So, yeah. um, an, uh, an attorney for the Seawalls denied all the allegations, says they're 100 percent provably false, and they the attorney said there is voluminous and irrefutable evidence that would tell you all you need to know that a disgruntled momager's own abusive behavior caused for her daughter to be asked not to return to the group. Basically, they were saying like you know for the other kids' safety that the child couldn't return because the mom was abusive. Yeah, like turning it around on the mom, which is. I mean, it's wild. But Rolling Stone did say that um, the producers try to make the kids cry on camera, and that's where like the emotional abusive stuff comes right. in. Right? They so. said basically like it's not a good day unless someone's cried. Yeah. And it, and in, to make up for it, like when they would go home at night in the hotels, they'd have like Nintendo and candy for them, and you know, make it all better, which is like so like classic abusive behavior is like just like absolutely like wreck someone and then be like here's some candy and nintendos and you're gonna be a star and we're gonna make you famous and i guess supposedly the house that they like were supposed to all stay at like the girls were like homeless like one girl was sleeping at the dance studio like they weren't allowed to stay at the house yeah so jesseline just content or it was a content house and yeah jesseline took out pay i guess they were owed ten thousand dollars um supposedly allegedly at the time of the recording completion, but they only got paid four thousand because Jesslyn had to pay for the Airbnb that they couldn't stay at. So like that house was just being Airbnb, and she's like, "Well, I have to take out the money for that." And it's so weird. It's it's like so dark too because obviously like JoJo as like a child star, and that's like you know her whole brand is so like wholesome and like you know. I'm going to come back like a boomerang. Like, it's, it's like so awesome. weird. I think it just shows the cycle of abuse, really. Because clearly, JoJo does not think she was uh, abused or exploited as a child. And she clearly was. Like, anybody could just see it without having to, like, talk about it. So the fact that she's still friends with, like, Abby Lee and all this stuff like that. It's like, this is where the cycle of abuse just continues. And then the mom, too. It's just like okay, you did this to your own daughter. Why are you doing it to all these other people to like promise them fame? And like, they didn't have anything. So they're like, oh, here. It's like the one girl, the girl who came forward, Leah, what did she have, spina bifida? So it was like two weeks after the surgery, she had her belly button was bleeding and she told her to put a maxi pad on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Allegedly. But that's, but what's crazy is what four members have left and none of the, the CWAS never commented on why they left. Yeah. And they've all left within a year and a half. So none of it, the optics are not great. <laughs> like even no. though all, obviously these are all allegations and like obviously the attorney's gonna deny the claims but like to not have like jojo or jocelyn like say anything is but i guess it's a lawsuit or whatever so i don't want to hear jojo's side on it honestly she has the worst takes when it comes to like when she's defending <laughs> colleen i was like girl she's just she misses the point completely all the time like i don't know if it's just like again i i like she is a victim of like i think child exploitation for sure or it's like she just didn't develop and she's just like not fully like aware and that's what I have to like think. But it's like she's so unaware of these situations. But, you know, supposedly she was like yelling at them too. Allegedly, JoJo was like yelling at all them, comparing them. The current members of the group, the one mom is saying, I find it very hard to believe the CWAS could have done anything wrong. And it's like, okay, yeah, because you're a current member. Again, it's like JoJo currently friends with Colleen being like, <laughs> 
I don't think she could do anything wrong. It's like, yeah, you're in the cycle. You're in there. It's just, or some parents are okay with having their child screamed at. Clearly, Jocelyn was okay with JoJo being screamed at by Abby mm-hmm. Lee. Fake or not, I'm sorry. Nobody's going to fake yell at my daughter on camera and like make her cry because JoJo cried so many times on that show. And I just don't believe that she was acting each time. And even if you are acting, you're still playing yourself. And that's like so weirdly manipulative and abusive for what? For fame? Not These kids are not going to be JoJo. You know what I mean? And yeah. even JoJo, I feel bad for. I would not trade anything for her fame or her money because she obviously has issues, like so many issues and just like not grasping them at all. I can't stand JoJo. And I think she's... I, I don't know. I think all this is very monster behavior. I don't think these allegations come out of nowhere. And I think she's really disturbed. I think she has like just the most, and it's just disturbing that she does all this stuff with kids. And I just think it's like, because she thinks it's okay. And all this, I, I, like just watching the few clips I've seen in the show, like, I don't know the fact that they even had this show, like none of it's okay. This is not like America's Got Talent. This is like, it's people who obviously Justin didn't mind doing this to her daughter, but now she's doing this to other kids. There's obviously some issue of four members have left. I don't know. They're little girls, and I just think it's, like, so not right. Yeah. And JoJo gives me really, really bad vibes lately, and it really sucks because I always thought she was, like, nice and cool, but it's just, like, the fact that she's not not, – you can go one of two ways, right? You can do the Allison Stoner route where it's, like, speaking up for, like, these kids in entertainment, which I don't even think – I don't know, but to the extent I watched a little bit of her podcast, Allison Stoner wasn't exploited the way as bad as JoJo. I think a lot of stuff happened to her. I'm not saying that, but, you know, she – it doesn't seem as severe as JoJo's, but she's speaking out against it, trying to, be, like, get help for kids and protecting kids on, like, sets and stuff like that, whereas JoJo's going the complete opposite and just exploiting more kids. Because at the end of the day, it is kind of – it is exploiting. I think reality shows, period, are exploiting. That's just what they are, and that's why I think adults should only be on reality shows. I don't think kids should be on reality shows – especially competition-based ones, even something like America's at Talent, which is like very regulated and all this stuff like that. They have all those rules. The kids are still going to feel bad if they don't win. Yeah. I don't know. It's just like psychologically, I just feel it's so, I don't know. It's just like, ooh, it's not good. Who was it? Was it, I think Maddie, I saw the other day, she was talking, I think she was doing like a bit with Drew Barrymore. And she's like, we're child stars. Of course we're going to have like trauma or whatever. It's like just, and I think everyone from Dance Moms has talked about being traumatized from that show, yeah. except for JoJo, which is Okay, like weird. Like get her get her into therapy or something because it doesn't matter what she says. Like there is something wrong and it's showing this with the repeated like people coming out against her, you know, stuff with her ex-girlfriends and the exploitation of the kids on the show. And I don't know, it's just very, very odd and very sus. And I just would think as a former child star, she would be like, let's protect kids and not exploit them to make money. I'm sure they're getting a percentage of their XOMG pop fame. What are they? They're doing like a cruise. XOMG pop has like a cruise coming out. I'm like... <sighs> They're really? eight-year-olds. Yeah. It's just <laughs> – and I guess one of them or maybe another one, maybe it was Leah, but I think some other ones too said said that they're using their images on like Walmart products and oh stuff God. and they're not getting paid anymore or they weren't getting paid, period. I don't know. And especially when parents don't know about the business and then they just get – they sign away basically everything and then – For like a dream. Money. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. Don't make your children famous, I guess. <laughs> I go back and forth with it because like on one hand it's like, yeah, I mean Maddie Ziegler turned out to be okay. She seems to be acting or Hillary Duff and stuff like that. I think it's the way you go about it. And I think reality shows are not the way to go about it. Yeah. We even found out later on um, Dance Moms, like Maddie was getting special treatment. She was getting pulled out of school to go rehearse early and stuff like that so she could know the dances better than the girls. And I was like, that's so messed up to the other girls who thought they weren't as good as Maddie or couldn't compete against her because she was getting special treatment to come out of school and go to the dance studio. Shame on all of them. But JoJo is an adult now. And I'm kind of done having like pity for her. I'm like, you're an adult. And like, you know, you can also make these decisions. You don't need to. It seems to me like this XOMG pop maybe was like something to give her mom to like give her something else to do or something. I don't know. But it's like be an adult girl. Stop defending weird, your weird relationships with adults when you're a kid. It wasn't normal. It's not okay. And don't normalize it like it is okay. Yeah. I just, oh, that just bothers me so much. It's like, good for you that you weren't traumatized from a relationship or a friendship you had at 13 years old with an adult. But that's not normal. And don't normalize it to your young fans. Period. Period. Anyways. <laughs> Next. <laughs> a quick one. Your fans. So we love. We love them. But um, How do we know? How do we know? <laughs> well, they were um, at the PCAs. Like, they were outside. Ooh. A group of fans. And... um. Toddy and Zane walked by. Why? Why were they right there? <laughs> That's when you know everybody is at the People's Choice Awards. Uh, I yeah. mean, I'll... Zane has a podcast, but Todd's wild to me. This is not Todd. Hey, I really don't have any any feelings towards him at all. But it's like he doesn't influence even. <laughs> he right? He doesn't podcast. No he doesn't post TikToks. He doesn't do Instagram. Like he's not an influencer. He does. He does Instagram. Okay. Well, there you and go. And Oh, okay. Well, there you go. 
Oh, um, all right, good. Anyways, gonna... <laughs> I take it back. He's influencing the world. Okay, what happened? Um, so here, I'll play it. Oh, no. <laughs> is it a video? Yeah, it's a TikTok. Oh, my gosh. I'm nervous. Can I, can I see the fans or no? Are they in it? Um, you can't really see them. So it's on. Shout out uh, to them, first of all. I love stuff like this. Thank you for showing it to me. God, people go so hard for me these days. I love you guys. Oh. Oh, it's Todd who said, of course. I thought it was Zane. We don't love Dan. <laughs> we hate David Dobrik. Shout out to that. What's that TikTok? That's a great one. That's so funny. The heart to Heart Podcast. Oh, my God. Shout out to the Heart to Heart Podcast. Look at them. Look at these podcasters knowing how to market. Shout out to the Heart to Heart Podcast. That's, That's why you go to the awards. Yeah. We need to go to do the same to people. Wow. I kind of live for these people showing up for me. I don't even need to go to the awards. People just go and shout out for me. Shout out Access. Shout out people. Shout out Heart to Heart. Doing boots on the ground work for me. That's wild. The fact that they... The fact that they shout this to the people at the vlog spots kind of everything. I actually have no – like I said, I don't really have hate towards Todd and Zane. I don't think. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if they did anything wrong, but that's funny. Oh, my God. Well, you know, we well, love that. Todd loves you, so there's that. I guarantee After you he definitely he doesn't have does not. <laughs> no, he does. I don't know what I'm talking about. That's nice. That's nice. Honestly, when people are nice and then there's no beef, I love it. You know what I mean? But uh, – Oh my god that's so nice people have been really nice lately and i'm really thankful i don't don't think it goes unnoticed i'm super thankful i try not to like just watch anything good or bad because i just don't want anything to get to my head like yeah it's like popping now inside like everything's good everything's good no matter what happens it's all everything's good so that's very nice so i really appreciate it people have been really nice on tiktok lately that people is very in general, sweet maybe not harass everyone but on in the, in the- <laughs> We love true. Us. But the, hey, we hate David. I mean, but that's again another one that maybe needs to, you know, be held accountable or take that's accountability. True. That's true. You know what I mean? When people just don't take accountability and think they've done nothing wrong. Like David <sighs> does not think he did anything wrong in these circumstances, especially with the Jeff thing. And I mean, it's like those are people you could just keep trying to hold accountable, you know, until they can take the accountability. That's what I'm saying. That is too I feel funny. like I've apologized 5,000 times for things I've said 10 years ago and I'll keep apologizing. But some <laughs> people just can't see that they did anything wrong, that they were never the problem. And that's where I have the problem. I'm just like, okay, if you really think you've never been the problem, that everything about you has just been lies, even though there's been proven truths it's like there's certain ones yeah we don't have to name all of them again but you know there's a list and as someone a victim of cancel culture it's like yeah there's a difference between cancel culture and then there's shitty people who just get to live life because they're rich or they're pretty or they're whatever i always think like i don't know people are just they turn they you do one thing wrong and then it's like oh you're thrown to the fishies you know what i mean to the fishies (laughs) i'm fishy today i thought thought we canceled fishy oh right i say we can bring it back as a cis woman i say we can bring it back because i have a fishy odor and it's you're real. allowed to use it you're allowed i think I, I give it to the drag queens i give it to the world <laughs> if i am a cis woman who has fishy smelling vagina sometimes i give it to the world i don't take offense to it and i think those are the only people who can say something's okay as the people that would offend <laughs> tea and it doesn't offend me <laughs> and how many other people are going to admit that they smell fishy at times probably not many so i think i speak for the fishy vagina community when i say it's okay i to love that fish. you're the face of the, the fishy vagina it is community Lent this season you know <laughs> We're serving fish every Friday. Get on that marketing campaign, Arby's. <laughs> Ooh, we should do an Arby's mukbang. Do you hear about Trader Joe's not serving real food? What? Yeah, it's all over TikTok right now. They're saying it's like fake food. They're doing like the egg test where they like crack an egg and it's like the yolk is yellow compared to how a pasteurized egg should be where it's like orange or something like that. And then someone else got chicken on January 28th and it didn't expire until March 5th. And they're like, how does chicken not expire till March 5th? And it was like a chicken breast that you would get like – that would expire in like three days or four days. Uh-huh. I believe it. I think Trader Joe's is a front. Oh my god! All of my oh, you live for it. Groceries are all Trader Joe's. Well, I saw really? a deep dive into all of the companies because you know they put Trader Joe's on it, but all the companies are companies you find at Vons and Ralphs. Oh wow! Everywhere. Like the branding. Yeah. Wow. I'm a Ralph's girly for sure. You like Trader Joe's the best? But they have all the frozen stuff and that's I just what, like, mm. yeah. That's what they say. It's like the, when people are asking about Trader Joe's, they always talk about the frozen yeah. section. Oh. And um, which to begin with, it's like, you know, it's a frozen section. So it's not a big. I love a frozen section. I used to love their fried mac and cheese balls, but we did buy them the other, like a month ago and I'm, they've been sitting in there and I was like, do you want to eat these? I was like, no. <laughs> no, I, I tried it and I threw it away. Really? It was a bad. I used to love those. Not good anymore. Yeah, I don't know. I had frozen shrimp this morning. I don't think it was good. I feel it in my belly. I feel it just wriggling around in there. You had the Trader Joe's vanilla bean sheet cake though. Oh, that was good. 
but not worth the hype. Yeah, I don't know. In general, I just don't really love the food from there. We have one near us. It's never great. We like the hash brown patties. That's about oh, it. Oh, those are good. Mm. Yeah. I get the orange chicken. Although problematic, why on their Asian stuff, they call it Trader Ming's, which I feel like <gasps> is so problematic. Oh, my God. They just changed the name for yeah, that one. Yeah, randomly. If you get the fried rice and the orange chicken or oh any of God. the Asian like frozen foods, it's packaged as Trader Ming's. Maybe I they're was trying like, to be respectful. Maybe. I don't know. That seems like so out of pocket. I'm like, huh? Maybe there's a Trader Ming's over there. That's I hope like, so. Oh, I hope there's an actual, like, that's the inventor of the Trader. I don't know. I mean, they don't have funny. on the hummus, they don't have Trader Moses. T. <laughs> well, I guess that is true. If they're only changing that. Or, like, if there's Mexican food, like Trader Jose's. Yeah. That'd be cute, actually. <laughs> they should do it. They should do it for every, or, like, Italian Trader. Isn't Joe already Italian? Oh, yeah. <laughs> We went to this place called Doghouse, which is so weird. <gasps> have you been? Yeah. Wait, do, is it one near you? Yeah, there's one across from the AMC. Does it have like three things in one? Like, what do you mean? Like, is it three? Is it basically like three restaurants in one kitchen? I think so. It's like, a, is it like a Shake Shack? Ours uh, is like, it's like a it's like a day's hot chicken, but it's not. It's called like Hot Mother Clucker. Yes. Okay. It's yeah, like yeah, Hot yeah. Mother Clucker, day's hot chicken, and like badass burritos yes! or something. It's so weird. We went in there the other day. They're open at 7 a.m. First of all, and I'm like, but you can get a corn dog at 7 a.m. or whatever, chicken tenders at 7 a.m. But they also had the breakfast burritos at 7 a.m. It's so weird. We went at 10 a.m. on a Saturday. There was like a ton of high school kids in there, like just so many high school kids. And we each got something different. He got the breakfast burrito. I got this like I was craving a corn dog. It was like a really greasy corn dog. It made us like so sick though. Like so both of us were so sick after it. And we got two totally different things. But I'm like, why is there like three restaurants in one? I've never had it. My boyfriend's had all of them, actually, at one point, but I've never had it. What did he say about it? He's fine with it? He wasn't sick? I think so. I was, like, violently sick from this hot dog. It was so greasy. And I only eat the corn off the corn dog. And then Moses had, like, a little bit of the meat part, and then he had a breakfast burrito, but he was had, his stomach was all messed up that day, too. But it was just, like, a weird vibe anyways. I'm like, how is this open at 7 a.m.? And I don't know what time they closed, but it was just kind of weird in there. Yeah, it feels like you're in a bar in the daytime, <laughs> you know? It was, like, Saturday morning, and all the high school kids were there eating and... You could get like a hot dog or chicken tenders or a breakfast burrito. It was very oh odd. I hate, I really hate going out in public now. It's like crazy because there's a lot of high school boys and I always talk about this, but like high school boys are just the worst because you know, they know, but they're also like talking about you and probably not in a good way. They're probably like making fun of you or something. I don't know. It was just like so annoying and embarrassing. I, was just, like, <laughs> I kept saying, I'm like, can we leave? Can we leave? I was so over it. I was just like, okay, I can't, can't go out in public. I like the girls, but the guys, they just, oh, they drive me nuts. I don't know. They all were in like some swim team or something. <laughs> They were just driving me absolutely nuts. And you know, Mabu, she wants to like say hi and look at everybody. And I was just like, don't look over there. <laughs> Avoid all eye contact. <laughs> you see Crumble is have a Olivia Red Mingo oh, cookie. Yes. But only at the city she's going to be in. Yes. I literally got the Crumble app just because I saw the cookies mm. and it looked so good. And then I saw it's like, it's only time to when she's freaking in town for the concert. I was like, well, what the hell? When she's here, aren't you going to go here? Isn't she coming here soon? She's coming here, I think in the... Like May or something. Oh, so we I thought it was March. While. Like, she's in Palm Springs in March. Oh. And then she comes back, I think, in May. Are you still a stan? You don't talk about her as much She's anymore. been kind of like quiet, but I love Olivia. I still, I literally only listen to Olivia or Taylor. That's um, it? And you. I did say, <laughs> I, did, I say that Superficial one? Bitch. It's at the top of my, um mm. when you open my music app. It's, Do you bump it when you're in the car? <laughs> <Yeah>. Superficial <laughs> Bitch. Uh-uh. My music was actually so good. I look back at some of those music videos like, God, that was kind of slayed. My Freaky Era, someone posted it. I was like, oh, God, I kind of was like really good back then. <laughs> I was like a Britney. No, you have so many good hits <sighs> in your discography. I think I was just like too, too ahead of it for everybody. Oh, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. But people are catching on now. They're seeing the music. I think the more you talk about the budget, I feel like you people think that you're being so like facetious when you talk about the budgets, but like the budgets were budgeting. Like there, they're big. There's <laughs> no big. lie detected. I just collected a bunch of invoices the other day from like a long time ago. I literally, yeah, I mean, there's no exaggeration. I spent one to two million a year for at least five years. There's like literally no exaggeration there. Even up until like 2021, I think I spent like a million dollars or something. Like it's crazy. Like people like don't believe it. I have to like bring out the invoices. Cause I'm like, there's <laughs> no. literally, I spent way too much on here. I would love to show it one day. Maybe in my books, I can show all the invoices and not proud of it. I could have had like three more houses, but I'm proud of it now. Cause I have to be, I have no other choice. <laughs> they are budget. I know people don't know. Maybe people can do it for cheaper. And if you can, good for you. But isn't that a Olivia Rodrigo song? Good for you. Yeah. Happy, happy and healthy. healthy. Not me. If you ever <laughs> can. I always give Gabby Hanna's version. And I love it. Um, Oh, I don't know. I'm going to save it for the Patreon because okay. Charlie D'Amelio is dating Olivia Rodrigo's ex. <gasps> Ooh, yeah. T. Patreon. Who's T. also friends with Tana. So it's a whole. Who's that? Who's the friends with Tana? Zach Bia. 
Oh my god! Well, Tana's friends with literally everybody. literally everyone. Yeah, she's like the Kevin Bacon, the seven degrees, six degrees of separation <laughs> yeah. to everybody. She knows every single person. It's actually crazy. <laughs> you guys, if you want more tea and gossip and all the fun juice, go to patreoncom trish where we can continue the podcast, continuing the fun. We have the extended podcast going up on Wednesday, and then Saturday we're gonna have our Dune bucket and mukbang. You don't want to miss out. Plus, if you want to get the new headshot Trish Modi sticker and the Moses and Trish keychain, that's what we're giving out this month. You have to sign up by March 10th to have it shipped by March 15th. So you have plenty of time to go do it. Um, and then for our February patrons who got the headshots and the stickers, those will be arriving in the mail to you this week. We have been working really hard. I had to order some more because there was more than expected. So that'll be out to you this week. We love you guys so much. Thanks for sir. <laughs> We love you guys so much. Thanks for sure. Oh my God. <laughs> We love you guys so much. Thank you so much for supporting this show here on YouTube and to our patrons at patreon.com slash Trish Trish. We love you and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye, guys. The shoes are coming off. Dog time. <laughs> in the light. Dog time. Me in the oh, yeah. light. <laughs> the, oh, I can't even get my foot up anymore. Oh.